welcome on in to our uh, bonus episode of Good Society, uh, featuring all new characters and an all new situation and about, I don't know, one to 100 new zombies. Uh, so thank you again for unlocking this bonus episode. Definitely, definitely appreciate it. Uh, and we're excited to do all that for you. Uh, first and foremost, though, we are going to talk about our sponsors, aka Hero Forge. Uh, go check them out. It is a website in which you can design your own miniatures, uh, and you can manipulate their positions, the items they're holding, uh, the the way their body do, <laughs> and uh, and the, there's also an option to uh, <laughs> add color. Who let me? <laughs> who let me on here? Uh, um, it was me. <laughs> to add color so you don't even have to paint your minis if that's not something you're a fan of or you don't have time for it go check them out hero forge jack cam um and uh the other thing we need to do is introduce uh all our players today so uh we're gonna do terry last for reasons uh so negs let's start with you hi i'm nega oryx and i am going to be playing felicity warwick today i'm very excited uh, and I'm very nervous for zombies. That's me. Huzzah! Uh, Eric? Hi, I'm Eric, and I will be playing Reginald Gross. Sounds accurate. Uh, <laughs> Bria? <laughs> Bria's on some giggle shits tonight, y'all. She, she literally told me today it was painful to be my friend. <laughs> I'm covered like there's soda in my nose because Eric is a funny. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, Who are you? What are sorry, you doing? I'm here? sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a Bria and I'm playing Mylin Caro. And all hell is breaking loose outside of my house. So I'm sorry if I have to go. The revolution has arrived. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, and Terry. I'm gonna unmute. That'll help. Hi. Unmute. 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 Hi, you guys. I'm Eva Saratoga. Um, I just I I'm here. You know, I um I'm a young dependent. I'm only 21, and um I'm just looking for adventure. And I'm in love, but I can't tell you who. But I am in love, but I can't tell you who. Okay. That was me at 21 also, so I feel that. <laughs> That's me uh, now. <laughs> <laughs> and Terry, um, I think you have something else for us that perhaps uh, chat law unlocked with their generosity throughout this campaign. Oh my gosh, I owe the chat a song. So maybe we do that? Yeah, and it's about our uh, our the first three episodes of our Good Society game. <laughs> is that correct or is it? I believe so. Okay. It's just it's just an overview <laughs> of good society. Yeah. It's a hypothetical overview Perfect. of good society um, from Saving Throw Show. All for right. all of you. <laughs> Everybody get your dancing shoes on. Oh, it's supposed to be a dance number. I'm I'm wearing Crocs. Uh, or... <laughs> okay, I was going for more of a minuet, but um, I don't know I guess what kind of shoes dance that requires. Too. <laughs> you can dance the mazurka in Crocs. I did. I have heard that. That that's okay. true. Have you done that, Abrea? I Yes. No, I don't believe her. She I don't buy any so of that. <laughs> uh, but but please, uh, but please, Terry, without further ado. Oh, oh sorry. Okay. Excuse me. I I'm sorry. I legit burped, didn't I? <laughs> sorry. That was, was me best, like trying to clear your song face and be ready. It's gonna happen again. I feel it. I didn't warm up, guys. Sorry. So sorry. Good society. The sensitivity of whippets mirrors the sensitivity of people. The wilding hams and Harrowby and Lady Andrews off on adventures looking for love. Artists gonna art. Ballers gonna ball, looking for inheritance, finding new suitors to call. Families growing, no one really knowing who holds the power, depending on the hour. 
the good society, the sensitivity of whippets mirrors the sensitivity of people looking for true love, wielding hams fighting for power, Clara throwing shade, sometimes looking dour. The masks that people wear in good society, pretending to be in love, falling helplessly. Your horse rides, carriage jaunts, strolls, and rain-drenched kisses. In good society, that's where the people go. In good society, the sensitivity of whippets mirrors the sensitivity of people. And scene. Yeah! Yeah! That was that's so beautiful. good! <laughs> I want a recording of that. It was so good. Oh my Please, God. yes, yeah. Professional yeah. recording when? Uh, oh my God. <laughs> I feel like if we send like 20 bucks to like Budapest, we can get a full orchestra. I don't just, know why I just, think that's true, but I do think it's true. I believe it. Actually, Anything is possible. I have a friend who, yeah, his orchestra that he conducts is in Budapest. That's super random, but that is exactly what they're from. I just I know tell things. if this is real or not. No, it no it's very real. It's real. <laughs> it I feel is. like. Like it's a very Eastern European thing to be like, everything is possible. Just throw some money at it. Like people will do it. <laughs> like, Just like the movie like Euro Trip. And conduct them. Yeah. Interesting. Well, yeah. what's stopping us then? When's Terry dropping her album? Great question. <laughs> you know, um, working on it, Drac. You know, we'll see. Uh <laughs> Man, Terry has an amazing voice. So I am here for Thanks. this. Thank and you. the I, brain so, that made that song yep. so talented. It's so good funny. Good brain, good voice. I good watch face. the voice a lot in my roommate with my roommates, and I'm like, so when I'm on it, like we make strategy all the time. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Yes. Is that a, a show I can vote on? Because I would vote the shit out of. Yeah, you, you can vote. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would. I would not only vote for you, but I'd force. I'd go out on the street, steal people's phones, and make them vote for you too. Whether they knew what the voice was or not. Oh yeah, that's that's what you got to do. You got to find enough friends that are like, oh, I'm not even watching, but no, tell them I mean, vote. I mean strangers. You're just gonna go accost people. <laughs> ah, give me that. <laughs> there you go. And run away. <laughs> she will. Hi. She will. That's not a joke. It's not hyperbole. She will do that. I hundred percent <laughs> believe that. I hundred percent believe it. Just yeah, be safe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> huh. Okay. Sorry, we're doing some behind the scenes. What are we doing? Oh, yeah. I was like, I'm um, reading the notes. I'm catching up on all the chats. <laughs> Children. That's oh, well, I'll sad. just say it out loud. There's just a bunch of sirens and like pops and like explosions happening every couple seconds. That's and terrifying. I'm pretty sure it's just a bunch of t teenagers with like leftover like fireworks, just mm. like getting in the shit with some 5-0 and I don't know what's happening. <laughs> like, That's yeah. like the funnest game in LA is fireworks <laughs> or gunshots. Yeah, yeah. right. I miss playing that every day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but thank you, Terry. That was so beautiful. I love that you so much. That was so good. What, what a, what a talent. What a vision. Oh, my God. Thank How? you. I was really inspired by the whip that I met on the street today, you guys. Like, <gasps> yes. so cute. Yeah. So cute. I met this whip at named Zoila, and she was like, she's a puppy. And she was just so excited and she wasn't sensitive at all. She was just like, Rawr. she was great. She was vibing. <laughs> she was super vibing. She was great. Um, cool. Then I think the next step uh, to do is to introduce our characters in full. Uh, so if we want to go around and everybody uh, introduce your character, if we want to talk about their appearance, uh, their desire, their relationship and the hidden or or obvious nature of it, uh, however that may be. Uh, and of course your character sheet or your background, whatever you feel is uh, pertinent or interesting. Uh, Terry, do you wanna kick us off? Oh, okay, great. I think I talked a little bit about my character just a moment ago. Oh yeah, um, just to, just to okay. like more of this introduction is more of like set the scene. So we're oh, kind of moving great. into the, so I'm the like novel cute. that is this I'm one I'm super shot. cute. Um, I'm petite, I'm just barely five feet tall. Very strong and brave and loyal though. And like I said, I'm in love with someone. Um, but I have to deal with my dad, I guess. Um, he can be kind of a 
a stick in the mud, I think, but I love him. And um, I have some great friends that probably get into a little bit of trouble with me, but I try to stay out of trouble. I try. I try. <laughs> awesome. Abria? Hi. Uh, so I'm playing uh, a hedonist and uh, one, of the, one of the peers of the realm. Uh, can I say all the cool secret stuff? If you want to. That's what I was like. You can yeah. if you want to. Uh, this so, is a one shot, so I think everything on the table is cool. <laughs> yeah, let's just drive it like it's stolen. Uh, so I'm playing a character that's got the like magic uh, expansion in it. So my Lynn is, is Fae Touched and can do dumb, useless magic. Uh, and uh, yeah, my, my desire is to bend the human court to your will. Like, like you do, which actually doesn't, that feels like a normal me thing. So can I get a desire that isn't exactly mine? Just yeah, please. Me, be... Wait. Oh yeah. Ple- I'm oh, saying a joking dumb thing or not? I'm, t- I'm telling a joke. Please continue what you're doing. <laughs> Bria, I've been doing this all day. Please know, don't I'm joke. Sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> also, I never open up the roll 20 thing. So <laughs> sorry, Dom. No one told me. I don't know what you're complaining about. We just asked you to take three different game systems, smush them together and design a new one out of them. What's <laughs> yeah. so hard? I guess maybe I should preface with this is this is good society, but they were kind enough to send me a copy of expanded acquaintances, which has a ton of different expansions in it (sighs) that include like uh, downstairs. So like the servants and people who work on the estate. It also includes like villains. It also includes like Zorro shit. Uh, It also includes uh, like magic as well as like the fake courts. It has a lady Susan PI, which is kind of like a one shot module that you can do um and then uh some information about combining the expansions and hacking good society as well so i definitely recommend checking it out but i basically combined good society sense sensibility and swordsmanship and just a dash of fake courts and uh and and a smidge of (laughs) downstairs at the abbey so it's all over the place and i'm so sorry story brewish if i just absolutely uh, trash this um, day off. I don't know her. Please don't, ta- don't tell my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't tell my therapist. Um, uh, but yeah, is there anything else you want to say about your character, Bria? Okay. No, cool. thank you. Yeah, Elwick. Uh, I am playing Reginald Gross, uh, who is, uh, <clears throat> he's the keeper of the house. Uh, he is the one who makes sure everything is running. Uh, according to its need and function. Uh, uh, And he has a bit of a secret in that uh, Eva, uh, unbeknownst to even her, is his child. What? I don't know that. I didn't hear that right now. So just so you guys know, but I'm going to probably find that out at some point. Uh, But like... But I'm also in love with somebody and like, I just, anyway, sorry. Bit of a (laughs) curfew. My desire. 21 years ago, I let my house down and gave him <laughs> to temptation, and I will not again. Mm, that's right. That's right. Uh, next. Oh my god, 21 years of stuffy British self flagellation just sounds awful. That sounds terrible. Well, when you say it, it sounds pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> I'm kind of into it. I was like, yeah. I'm going to listen to you talk about it some more. Yes, please. yes please. So, Slower and look directly into the camera. Thank you. Yeah. Clearly, I did not sell that. As- <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you, you sold wanted. it. You sold it good. You sold it, you you sold it gonna, real good. We're going to mm-hmm. drop this. I'm playing uh, Felicity Warwick. She is a servant and a socialite. Uh, she is best friends with Mylan. Uh, through through odd set of circumstance, despite the odds, they became friends very quickly and they're very close. Uh, and she mostly focuses on her job and takes pride in her work up until about a month ago when she royally screwed something up at work. And so her greatest desire is to make amends for that error and be able to safely retain her position. Uh, uh, and what I would love for you to do next is, can you tell me how she fucked up? And what I'll also need you to do is tell me who in the upper part of the house, since you're a servant and uh, in the lower part of the house, 
who did you make look bad? Who did, who did, whose reputation did you tarnish in the way that you did? Keeping in mind, you are the groundskeeper or sorry, the uh, gameskeeper. Uh, totally. I can answer that hundred percent. Quick question first though. What yeah. does the gameskeeper do? So, uh, you're the Hagrid. <laughs> yeah. I never knew what he did though. I just <laughs> no, never asked. Helpful. So. In the case of dealing with deer as a person who manages an area of countryside, e.g. areas of woodland, moorland, waterway, or farmland to make sure there's enough game for shooting and stalking or fishing for angling and acts to guide those pursuing them. So you basically just keep, keep the estate stocked with aminals. And I think you'd be in charge of the dogs too. Let's just say that. Okay. Can whippets? this also whippets real good? <laughs> Not no whippets. Can this also be the like hunting world where it's just like dramatically and scenically being on horses as like as you pretend to like talk and not actually not ever fire your hunting. gun. Hunting, y'all are gonna be eaten by zombies. As a gamekeeper, is her job to like scare up all the animals so they like walk beautifully by as we are on I our also like? I don't know what a gamekeeper is, so just tell me what it is. I'm seeing that's what it was. This is no, you is. don't get to say. No. Nix gets to say. Was, it's her character. I was, oh, oh. Can I? Can I finish? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's okay. So. Uh, my thinking for this, because I think it could tie nicely into her relationship with Mylan, and just let me know if this works for you, Abria. Um, I think maybe, like, upon becoming friends with Mylan so quickly, uh, maybe Felicity discovered something about Mylan having, like, a soft spot for animals, and maybe, like, in passing once mentioned, like, what a shame it is that they get hunted. And uh, for the first time in her life, against her better judgment, instead of doing the job that was expected of her, she was so grateful and so excited to be swept up into this, like, close friendship with with Mylan that she wanted to do something to impress her and to, to make her happy. And so she set free the animals that were to be used for, like, the biggest hunt of the year kind of thing and so it was uh incredibly it, it left the the lord and lady of the house uh essentially did not know until all of their guests were already there and prepared to go out hunting and there was nothing for them to hunt and it was uh quite an embarrassment to them and it was like the talk of the town that you know the their servants they don't have good control over them and et cetera, et cetera. And I think that was like, like it's amazing that she was not fired already for what happened, you know? And then how did that reflect badly on Mylan? Um, I Or did it reflect badly on another major character? Yeah, I think, I think it wouldn't, she wouldn't, say that she did it for Mylan specifically, but I think it was kind of implied, like everyone knew that was, they kind of saw the seeds of that friendship a little bit. And so it, uh, it didn't necessarily get her like blacklisted from the family for having been tangentially involved in this. But I do think maybe people look at Mylan a little differently for having you know like become friends with a servant in the first place and it, or or even you know maybe they don't know that uh she released the animals to impress her but they they know that she's been seen being kind to this servant that clearly does not do a very good job so i think okay i'm liking this let me pitch something a a, a small tweak is that you did that for her and you got in trouble but then mylan took the fall for you are you cool with that, Abria? I love that. Okay, so add a negative reputation tag to your sheet, Abria. Um, and what do you want that to be? Um, um, maybe like a like a bad sport or like interfering or. Uh, I actually really like bad sport. Okay, it makes her a little petulant, and I like okay. that. Ooh, wait, I can I just be petulant? <laughs> and I think that was maybe like a even uh, even though it's like reflected badly on Mylan and you feel like a, a strong need to make up for it. I think it's also maybe a cornerstone of your relationship because it's like she's in she's in the upper echelon and she in no way had to or 
there was zero expectation for her to protect you in any way. And perhaps otherwise you would have been fired, you know, and, or, you know, I don't know what happens, banished, <laughs> go into the desert. And Tarred and feathered. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, otherwise you would have been fired and then, and then you don't know where you be, you know, um, but I think it's also put you in the bad regards of Eric's character. Uh, what's his name? Herbert or something? <laughs> Her head's in the Gross. <laughs> I think it's also put you in the bad regard because I think I think he's like, I don't know, I know what you did last summer. Uh, but yeah, I think I like that a lot. I am quite aware of what activities you you did in the previous summer. I I deeply hate that like the way servants' names worked back then was women were by their first name and men are by their last because gross has just, it's the funniest word I've ever heard today. And I'm really upset about it. Bria, are you, are you, sh are you smoking the, the giggle weeds? I know, it's just a funny word. <laughs> I will have you know, I named him after my favorite actor, star of all of the, the uh, the uh, Tremors movies, Michael Gross. <laughs> Michael Gross, we love him. Oh my God, yes. He's TV dad. Uh, I don't know who that is. <laughs> it's because we, you're a young. No, oh, we watched no. we watched Tremors six. He was he was a star On before Christmas Tremors, Day. you guys. He he was a star before Tremors. No, wait, uh, who was Michael I'm Gross trying... in Tremor 6? He's 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 the, the guy with all the guns. Sorry. Is he Sorry. also named after Reg Reginald Bell Johnson? Because I need that too. Please. Oh my god, you guys, he's he was a TV dad before Reginald Bell Johnson was a TV dad. <laughs> oh my guys. I'm so old right now. <laughs> I couldn't tell you what Family Ties was about. <laughs> I, I've okay, never so you know that you know family you know, show. Okay, so you know the movie Back to the Future? Sort of. It's hey, Michael J. Fox was the star yeah. of this was the TV show that was he was on before he became a movie star. I thought he was yeah. a baby doctor. No, no, that was... that's. <laughs> that, oh my that's god, Do that's Doogie Howser. That's Doogie Howser. It was three letters of the family. Think of them. Yeah, Family Ties was. Uh, family Michael Ties Gross was before family... Doogie Howser. <laughs> they were they were very liberal and and Michael J. Fox was a, a like a Ronald a Republican, Reagan young Republican, yeah. yeah. And it was like, isn't it wacky? And it was, because they were like old hippies, but then they were yuppies. Anyway. And it was. You can't hear me screaming over Zoom. I'm so glad Spooky Teapot <laughs> looked up Michael Rose. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm glad for y'all doing the work out there oh using the God. Googles. Use the Googles. Use them Googles. Anyway, right. Michael Gross was an icon and he was a really big star. <laughs> Still is. <laughs> Still is. How dare you? Okay, now that we have uh, been introduced to our characters in some and in some degree and know some of their motivations and some of their connections, I would like to know, Bria, how you've come to stay at the uh, Eaton at Eaton Abbey, which is the name of the estate we are placing our one shot in, uh, uh, because you are not related to this family. Correct. You are staying with them or visiting for some reason. Um, I think that. Uh, I am a a friend of like the matriarch of the house, and uh, my like I normally don't I don't have like a like a country estate, so I think I am like the kind of peerage that like just goes and rents a place in an area for the summer, like when it's not fashionable to be in London anymore, and uh, for whatever reason, all of like she was just invited like the last holiday season to go out and stay with his family. So she's just sort of visiting and hanging out and doesn't really have a, a dog in this fight as far as like yeah. the area goes. So she's just a little chaos goblin. And sorry, how do they, uh, how do they know of her? Is it just through reputation or is it through? Uh, it's just society friends, I think okay. with whatever the matriarch of this, of uh, Eaton Abbey is. Cause the other Mrs. thing, Eaton. the other thing to consider mm -hmm. is, um, is that you are magical and a lot of, uh, as we've talked about, like a lot of your magic is like uh, charm and uh, and like glamour and things like that. So it could also be either fully or a mix of like, you've uh, you've done some sort of spell to convince the, uh, uh, to, to uh, command the matriarch of the estate to let you be like a permanent, semi-permanent residence. 
Uh, I, I mean, yeah, I think like her entire, like the fact that she's a peerage and like is, has any place in society is just because she like can do the thing from Rick and Morty where she like reminds people of all the good times that they had, even though they never had them. So she's a society I, fixture I without having to go any anywhere. Reference to okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> she doesn't go out to events when she meets other right. like socialites. She convinces them that she, they, they, they're old friends and have spent lots of time together. So all of the benefits of going out and socializing without av actually having to do it, which is yes. the best power I've ever heard of. Okay. I like that a lot. Um, and then uh, Eric, just to deep dive on your character a little bit, how did it, uh, we've also, we know we had to make, have a matriarch character because uh, of a Bria's relationship with them, but also because of uh, your relationship with them. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you want to explain how like that came about? Uh, sure. Um, I think, yeah. Um, so the, the matriarch's youngest daughter, we were around the same age, you know, and we kind of grew up together. Uh, but, you know, it was like, uh, like, oh, we could never be anything. But then over over years and stuff like that, and with the war, you know, the general war uh, and, and, and stuff like that, and me being at home, uh, I think we we just became too too familiar over the years uh and that led to uh a a one singular night of uh of uh just not not staying to my vows and uh you know and uh now 20 here we are 21 years later <laughs> uh are okay. there vows to be a servant like i promise not to like <laughs> touch butts wow this is great i can't wait to learn about this <laughs> i mean there's multiple ways to be of service i'm just saying um so <laughs> do tell do tell i'm so warm in this quote please the quote please don't make me blush um okay so the matriarch of the house is like an older woman that isn't in charge and then there's like a like her daughter that is in charge or like his I think her daughter the dead or um, the daughter might, I don't know if the daughter's here or not, but like, I think the daughter like had the child, but when quickly got, uh, married, uh, or was betrothed at the time, which is what makes it even more scandalous, but because they, they were so close and they got married before the kid came. So nobody knows except for the few people that do. So there your lover and her husband are the heads of this house. Yes. Okay. And then the matriarch is just like the old mom who's vibing. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. old mom vibing. Uh, so we're going to have uh, Ava, we're going to have you create um, your your fake dad. Um, and then- No, he's Eric my dad. Like Eric is just <laughs> like, you know. I mean, he's your dad as far as you know. You um, and then Reginald, we're going to say- um uh what what do you say woman woman of the house is that what you say um the lady of the house lady of the house <laughs> i'm the woman of the house woman of the house <laughs> um of the lake. okay so i think those are all the ones like we need so let's go ahead and uh dive into connections and i'm gonna need uh keep this in mind i'm gonna need uh two people to forfeit one connection because i'm gonna use them um I'll so it. yeah okay um yeah. so your one connection for a myelin currently is the matriarch yep so do you want to come up with a name for her shannon eaton shannon eaton i love it shannon eaton dad ass <laughs> um <Stop>. oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. shannon eaton uh <laughs> <laughs> and if you could fill out uh her her connection there uh and then what they think about your character, which is? Uh, she thinks that she's a, a that, uh, what, I don't remember what my character's name is. Mylin is a, a breath of fresh air in the, in the countryside. A breath of fresh air in the countryside. That's actually amazing. I think, I love it. yeah, I think Shannon's like one of those old biddies. It's like, I'm enabling this because I'm bored. Yeah, <laughs> because I am bored. Uh, I love that. Um, and then, uh, do you want to, well, I'll find a card for her in the meantime, uh, Spencer Saratoga, the third of course is 
Wait. <laughs> wait. You can't have this. Oh, wait. Never mind. I guess that makes sense. I'm what? confused. No, you're right. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Spencer Saratoga the third, aka your fake dad. <laughs> Ev, uh, is it Eva or Eva? Eva. Okay. Uh, I think I'm saying it wrong Eva. every time. Fuck. I'm so sorry. Yeah, me too. Eva. Um, and then in relationship, go ahead and put our other one. Go ahead and put your fake dad. Um, and then what do you want your second connection to be, Terry? It could oh. be a sister, a brother. It could be a friend. A confidant. Is it the person I'm in love with that I would do anything for? Is it that no, person? No, that's... That's my that's desire? That's Mylan. That's me. So, the person I'm in love forever and ever? It's Mylan. Oh my god. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> this got out of control really fast. <laughs> Terry, <laughs> focus. I'm so sorry. Okay. Hi. Okay. It's been a long day. Um, <laughs> You're telling maybe has me. It been has it been long <laughs> enough? And I know Zvanna's no. like been like Frankensteining all day. You're so amazing. I love you so much. Okay. Um, um what wait, do we want can to this be? What do you want? Can this be your dad? Oh yeah, full on. So uh, I think I dated a guy who looked like that once. It's funny. James married, perpetually underdressed, <laughs> delightful and relaxed company, endlessly embarrassing and good company, a little too free with his money. He sounds fun. I like uh, that. But instead of James, that's Spencer Saratoga the third. And then mm -hmm. uh, for a second connection, what are you feeling? Looking for some help. No one's giving me anything. No, no idea. Well, yeah, everybody can pitch into this. this is a collaborative storytelling game. Uh, Eva mm. is ad adopted. So I think it might, or not adopt. She doesn't know she's adopted. I'm yeah. uh, adopted. So what I think might be interesting is like a, a, blood relative or a blood yeah. sibling of the two. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Younger sibling that is. Uh so do you want a sister or a brother? Yeah, I'll have a little sister. Okay. And should I have a big no, I'll have a yeah, little sister. Um, Her name is a little sister? Or do you want somebody older? You want somebody older? You have somebody good in your stack? Uh, maybe, no, I'm just thinking maybe older because, um, maybe like you, since you were like a surprise, you know? Yeah. It wasn't oh, I'm a theirs. whoopsie. So my sibling is much older, like my real life. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> um, my brother, my brother in real life is seven years older than me. Love it. I, I'm, I'm older. I'm five older, five older than my brother. Yeah. Seven's a long time. <laughs> Um, <laughs> my mom's like that's how long it took to forget the pain of the first one i was like yeah 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 <laughs> and my brother used to tell me i was adopted all the time as a child but it turns out they were going to adopt a kid from africa and they didn't anyway i've overshared <laughs> on this stream today <laughs> hi guys <laughs> um okay what about anna she's kind of a oh, kind of a nerd great. anna okay i'm gonna call kind her of a anna nerd Annalisa, Annalisa Saratoga. Uh, nature lover, cheerful, sprightly, and rarely found indoors. Middle child, so you maybe have an even older sibling. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, far more focused on natural sciences than on marriage. Much to her mother's chagr chagrin. Um, chagrin. Chagrin. Uh, okay, great. That is your connections. Uh, Negs, what are you thinking? I'm thinking it could be fun... I'm thinking it could be fun to have a much younger sibling here. Uh, okay. And they're also in the service of the house. Yeah. Yeah. And to I have like that. What about um, a lady's maid? Heck yeah. Mm. <laughs> Dude. Uh, what about Ami uh, Amelie? Ami Amelia? Amelie. Yeah, heck yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, a lady's maid, playful. Oh, actually, let's do this. A housemaid, eager to please. Uh, resituated from her last post when a romance was suspected. <laughs> Quick to smile and laugh, she tries overly to please to prevent another upheaval. So maybe she used to work with you in um, as uh, like an assistant to the gameskeeper, and then something 
maybe perhaps untoward was suspected. And so she got moved into the housemaid position by probably Eric's character <laughs> to maintain uh, appearances. I like that a lot. Um, so younger sister, Amelie. Um, and what else do we think? How How is that spelled? Because I couldn't see it on the... A-M-E-L-I-E. -E. Okay, thank you. Um, and you've got Myland as a, or, sorry, Mylan as a close friend. Um, you could have a parent, uh, or a, like, a love interest that's a connection, or... I've got a footman here that is <laughs> looking interesting, serving some yeah. looks. Yeah, serving some looks. What what kind of looks are we talking? Is this a good love interest? Really, really pitch him to me. Sell him to me. Ben. Really pitch him to me. I can't. Uh, his name's Finnegan. He's love a footman. It. He's a gentle love soul. It. Yep. A good. foreigner. He works hard to secure his place. We love Rindles it. Rindles his romantic nature for the sake of his position. Seeves with forlorn affection. <gasps> oh my God, so do I. That's what I seethe with. Mm -hmm. okay. Whenever I describe All you, all day, every the day. First thing I say. Seething, right? That's the first yeah. thing that comes seething. to mind. Seething. Okay. Seething with forlorn affection. Can't fight this Finnegan. either. Finnegan, that's who I'm putting down for my second one. Uh, perfect. So, um... Eaton Serta. Okay, I got it, Eric. Uh, and is probably the same age as you, right, Eric? Your connection? Yeah, I would think so. Um, trying to look for a look for a card. Did I lose Finnegan? Finnegan, come back! Oh god, this is the worst. You're never gonna find um, me. I'm Finnegan. <laughs> return again. I'm Finnegan. <laughs> return again. Finnegan never gonna return again. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um what kind of person do you think she is, Eric? I have no idea. I have no idea. Oh my god, is it this cat lady? Yes, absolutely. Wait, can it be this is for one of their other expansions, but can it, can it be Lady <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely. Holy goodness. She looks wild. <gasps> Discerning lady detective. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's two versions of this. Wait, I like this one more. Mm. Like, she looks like she could kill some zombies. You know what I mean? Is, are you cool with that one? Yes. Smooth talking. We're going to ignore Lady Detective. Yeah. <laughs> Accomplished and notorious. This is all about being a detective. Her <laughs> reputation precedes her, as does her large upfront payment. So she got that money. All right. I think that is all of our connections. And then I will introduce you. Uh, yeah, please fill out like descriptions uh, and how they feel about your major character. Eric said a bit prude and Kalu. Oh, is that what that's, you filled out, Eric? No, that was the How default. do you think she feels yeah. about you? Hmm. That's a tough. Um, well, she does kept she me know? on. Does she know? I mean, does she know that I got her pregnant? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> No, I mean that, yeah, I don't know. If she was having sex with two people at once, this True. is Regency era. <laughs> Maybe she suspects, but it's not. Yeah. 100% sure. So how does she feel about you? Yeah. Well, I imagine if she kept me on all of these years that she cares for him. Mm -hmm. uh, but keeps him at a, a respectable distance that he understands. Beautiful. I love it. I love Aww. it. I love it. Um, and then, uh, okay. And you filled out yours next. Do, do you, um, what's so funny? I worked really hard on these. I really thought I captured the essence of that character. Why are you laughing at my heart? Next for Finnegan says, I couldn't type fast enough to keep up with Havana reading his description, but he sounds hot. <laughs> yeah, that's Guys, That's the truth. Oh. <laughs> um, Amazing. And... <laughs> Sorry, that, um, that really got me. I just took I'm... a power sip of fucking juice after that too. She knows. Uh... Um, 
I took a I took a a puff of that giggle weed that I am on. not high. I'm just happy to be no, here. No, I don't think you're high. I I'm, think you're high on a hypothetical substance called giggle weed. That's true. Yeah. It makes your tongue orange, but <laughs> why is your tongue orange? She was thinking orange so from a two liter and she told us not to judge her. No, I didn't hear that. I did not hear that. I found that. a cup. <laughs> Um, okay. And then the connection that I am going to add, um, thank you for giving up your connection spot so I can add these. Uh, I'm going to add Horatio. Uh, I knew ye well. Mm -hmm. Um, and his last name is going to be Grim. I just went full force with this, y'all. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, he, him. Do, do, do. And uh, he's a medium, so he's part of the magic expansion uh, cards. And he is the, uh, we're also taking the big bad element from another part of the expansion book. Uh, and he is the second in command to the big bad. Uh, so that's going to be his relationship. Uh, but I think he's also, um, I think he's a friend of the house. Because he's gone and done a reading there before, maybe. Okay. Uh, it's an old house. Perhaps there are some spirit, latent spirits around. Um, this is around what? the time where rich white people would pretend to think about ghosts a lot. <laughs> to pretend to think about them. Oh my God. Um, I think about them all the time. I'm having a seance next week. It's going to be so fun. Wait, yeah. were, were seances and ghost things like the true crime of like Victorian yeah. England? Yes, I they would do that. Specifically oh. attacked. Yeah, <laughs> and then and then then they thought it would be fun, and a woman invented science fiction. <laughs> That's right. There you go. You're damn right. Um, how does Mylan feel about Horatio? This is what he looks like. He cutie. Stop making him. Oh, he's cute, Bedour. I like it. No, no, no. He's a sad, sad boy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do love a sad soft boy. Very cute. And he's old fashioned, so he probably thinks women are buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an old fashioned man. Uh, is Horatio <laughs> actually good at ghost stuff, or is he just a big old? Fraud? I think he's reluctantly good. Okay. I, I think it, it's like it's it's imposed upon him, and he's like, this sucks. Um, <laughs> That's why he's bummed all the time. <laughs> Conversing with the dead has made him a tad gloomy, but well versed in local affairs. So he has the inside scoop on everything because the dead also gossip. Um, Ooh, I like him for his scoops, it. but I do give him a very hard time because he doesn't enjoy like his access to the spiritual realm. And I'm like, why aren't you having fun with this? All ghosts do is talk shit, I think. Like, get into it, son. Uh, okay, so likes him uh, for his access, but is disappointed uh, in his disinterest yeah. of the supernatural. Yeah, so okay. uh, if he's doing the like, uh, yeah, 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 perf. If he's doing the what? Nothing. Nothing. You good? Uh, and then, of course, we have our big bad of the game, which is Matthias. I'm sorry, he's hot. Oh, oh, oh. I'm into it. No, he's so hot. And that's really what hot. A, that's what a villain should be is is tasty. Yes. Smoking hot. Smoking hot. Yes. A, a conflict uh, of interest. So his name is Matthias Grave. Uh oh, yeah. he him. Which is actually a, a name they used back then that I thought it was pretty. Um, but I would like to figure out a relationship and I'm building this under your tag, Eric. So what I would like to propose is that uh, he used to work in the house. Like he used to be a servant. Yes. Um, and I, he, yeah. And was he, he was, he was, he did some, maybe he wasn't fired, but he like, he went he like married his way into society or something in a way that like that's not we're supposed to be, there are betters you're not supposed to do that uh but he was fired for meeting abby yeah uh servant fired from uh i must said eaton at eaton abby uh and and how do you feel about him uh With that in mind he is a reflection of the path i could have gone down Eric is very good at this. Eric is very 
very good at this. He's, it's Eric, deeply your character upsetting. Not as shit. What? Uh, Here's Eric's character. I sent you all pictures, but yeah. I'm sorry. I want Eric to tell me if Eric's character is hot as shit. If I have to feel weird about this. Mm. <laughs> yeah. He's Eric. Eric. Is your character hotter than that picture? Uh, my character takes care of himself because I believe. Also, yeah, you can also describe yourself. It doesn't have to be he, that card. <laughs> he he would be like yeah. He would be like uh, he's like a. a like a uh what's his face uh fucking uh george clooney level of like he's 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 an older gentleman but he takes care of himself uh he like but he wears like a lot of heavy clothing so you can't tell so. okay 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 this is good he's to know i like that he's uncle iroing under there he's an yeah. undercover yeah. <laughs> undercover hottie we love an undercover reference. hottie I, I know a reference that we talk about tonight what an, what an interesting yeah. thing um that's a miracle oh. I know, truly. <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle. God bless us. Everybody. God bless so everyone. so done with our tomfoolery, and I'm here for it. Who is? I'm just taking it all in. I'm a front row seat. I'm just missing popcorn. <laughs> Listen, I thought you had a popcorn machine Oh, I yeah. Do. I can't eat from it every day. Otherwise, my health <laughs> will decline quickly. What's the point of having <laughs> Yeah. It's a special treat. <laughs> it's 2020. It's so sweet. You want to keep going? Like, <laughs> oh my right. God, what, Eric. What, Jesus Christ. What are, we, what are we preserving ourselves for? It's like Apocalypse. Is here. Remember, Apocalypse is here. It's Apocalypse. <laughs> Eat the popcorn. <laughs> apocalypse popcorn. Yay. <laughs> a popcorn. The lips. Oh my God. Mm. I Any babies that know the word apocalypse, I'm here for it. Um, and so this means maybe here. <laughs> this means that uh, that Finnegan and uh, and Amelie is it Amelie? Amelie, Amelie, she's Amelie. French. Um, she's not French, and but she wants to be. And Felicity know Matthias uh, a bit more intimately, and then the upper people of the house uh, know Matthias, but uh, with with a lesser regard. Not just because he's a servant, but because he did some shit. To get fired, and and I think he was just generally like um, subordinate. Is that the right word? Insubordinate. Insubordinate. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that is our characters. Those are our connections. We are almost ready to start. Let me just introduce you all officially to the big bad, aka Matthias. Uh, Matthias used to work. <laughs> Matthias used to work at Eaton Abbey. Um, and, oh, I opened roll 20 and then didn't, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> it's a mess. I'm so sorry, y'all. Um, and, um, oh my God, it is 2020, isn't it? You're killing it. And I'm it makes me it. upset when you're like, it's a mess. I'm like, I'm having a fantastic time. <laughs> I'm having the best time ever, oh my honestly. God. Not mad. Um, thank you, fam. I, I love you very much. Um, but he used to work in the house. He got fired because he was just generally um, insubordinate. I don't know if anyone like wants to jump in with like maybe something in particular he did that was uh, specifically heinous. That could be like a cool uh, collaborative detail we could add. Abria. Oh, that was my thinking face. I know it would look like I was raising my hand. <laughs> I was thinking. I don't have an answer yet. Um, um, I, I think he just didn't, he really didn't like to take orders. Yeah. Uh, he didn't like to take them from you, Eric, but he really didn't like to take them from, uh, the, uh, upstairs folks. Um, and generally didn't do what he was told. I think he stole, uh, and sort of, uh, because he coveted the wealth that they had. Um, and could, anyway, he be, could he have embezzled from the house by like skimming and yeah. like yeah. altering yeah, the yeah. books to like. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, but he got caught, and uh, and he got fi he got fired for his multiple offenses. Um, and after that, he uh, he just got sent out, and he didn't have he didn't have family, he didn't have a place to turn. So he ended up on the streets, and um, in the streets, he ran into this uh, particularly um, dark uh, faction of magic that persisted uh, throughout uh, this local society. 
uh, and got drawn in uh, to their ways with uh, the dark heart that he already had and and also his penchant for dramatic flair uh, certainly drew him towards it as well. Uh, and after a number of years, he became quite a versed summoner and using those summoning skills, um, he was able to build up a um, very profitable uh, textile manufacturing plant that earned him the title of new money. Uh, and what P played by Carl Urban. I don't understand that reference. <laughs> it's just I don't Dredd. understand that. Uh, oh, I've seen that. We watched that, didn't we watch that? No, that, well, we watched the uh, the old bad one. Oh, okay. I don't know, y'all. Listen, quit making references unless they're about the four of you. <laughs> or that's Avatar. That's all, all I know. Or Avatar. <laughs> No, I don't know any of those things. Lord of the Rings. Wait, who's he in Lord of the Rings? He's he's uh, one of the writers of Rohan, the the like the not the son, but the the nephew of the king. Have you seen the boys? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> Shit. Um. Did you don't see, worry about it. Did you see Thor Ragnarok? No. I've only seen the second Thor. Did, did you see Pathfinder, the movie about Vikings? No. <laughs> I don't think he's been in anything that you've seen. I've seen Lord of the Rings, but I have no idea what the hell y'all are talking about. I love you so much, Vanna. Uh, I love that you have like zero pop culture references in your I'm brain. just a dumb baby, okay? <laughs> I'm just a dumb baby. You have been unpolluted and unsullied by this world and I love it. I know references to breeds of dogs, uh, <laughs> random animal sex facts. <laughs> Um, I don't know what else. That's it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, but anyway, uh, Matthias um, has generated uh, this extreme, uh, extreme new money-based wealth based on this uh, huge textile factory that he's opened up. And uh, there's a huge mystery around town of like, it seemed to crop up overnight. Like the output that they have is something that no one has ever seen before. Um, and, uh, and just generally like the amount of product he puts out, the quality of the product he puts out, like, and the, um, how fast he made his fortune. It's just very mysterious and astonishing to a lot of people, but it's also gotten him into a lot of circles because they're like, wait, I would like to make a lot of money really fast. Uh, so it's gotten him in a lot of good people's graces and he's just out of spite sort of forced himself back into the circles that he used to be a servant for. And I think when he came back, it was years and years later. Um, and the family doesn't even, didn't even recognize him. And I'm not sure that he brings it up because I think it's, it's mostly to his own service that he gets to be there uh, and know that, you know, he used to work there and used to be belittled and now he's there and they're regarding him with this higher esteem. And he takes a, a, a great, like, uh, uh, he thinks he thinks of it as a great sort of like uh, mental delicacy, <laughs> just knowing that. Um, but what that's what everyone knows in total. But well, I will say to introduce this bad, uh, big bad, just to you as players, is that the reason he can do the outfit that he does uh, at his factory is because uh, in his summoning career, it's uh, it's leaned heavily into necromancy, and so he's using. Uh, corpses from the local graveyard as free manual labor and he has an accomplice uh, a sec a right hand man uh who is uh you'll know this above game but not necessarily in game horatio grim uh second hands of the big bad who is using uh his uh his ability to uh talk to the dead to help very specifically control the zombies that are working in the textile factory. Uh, the clothes are people. <laughs> that too. Um, it's all made of human hair. Uh, so that's what you know a bit above game. Uh, the other thing that I will say, and this is again above game, just so y'all can inform the role play that we do, is that the evil plot of Matthias Grave is that he wants to become the wealthiest and most powerful force in Havishire so that he can rule the local economy as well as this be uh, the top of the social echelon 
uh, and do all that with uh, an iron fist and zero mercy. Uh, and that, and uh, to then put the rest of the upper class to shame and perhaps ruin them financially, socially, or societally uh, in order to get revenge for how he was treated when he was a servant. And uh, it gets worse because he has hordes of zombies at his disposal. Uh, so that is the big bad. That is the evil plot. Question of Bria. Uh, what if I agree with his conclusions and I also would like to eat the rich? You can do that. I will stay. I will, I will put it uh, <laughs> uh, that in, in the book when they're talking about the big bad, uh, which is in uh, Sense, Sensibility and Swordsmanship, I think. Um, check it out. Story Brewers website um is that he's a normal person like he's a regular connection so y'all can interact with him in any way that you want he can be someone's lover he can be someone's family he can be someone's friends he can be someone's arch nemesis like for a completely different reason like he's just another character um and it's like uh, you're either privy to this or unprivy to this depending on how the resolve tokens play uh out but um but yeah, he's just a person. So you can choose to side with him. There's nothing against that. <laughs> so, Perfect. which I think is why it's interesting while we have this sort of balance of like upstairs, downstairs with the major characters. And again, uh, even Eric more so where he's like, he's kind of got a piece of himself in both worlds uh, to some degree. Um, and again, Ava is, is, should be downstairs, you know? So I don't know. It's all, it's all very interesting. So I have a crush on what? Littlefinger. Why are you just screaming that? Someone just should be downstairs. <laughs> um, because because you're the daughter of a servant. Yeah. What? Yeah. Eric's your dad. Oh, are you in character right now? Yeah. <laughs> Don't. I'm tired. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um. All right. So uh, the other my daddy. I like it. That's <sighs> partly why I chose this character. <laughs> Why'd you? S what? I have to go. <laughs> no, stay. Go. It's going to be fun. I have to go. I have to okay. go. I'm so warm just, in here. Just wheel the bandicoot <laughs> in front and just walk away. <laughs> just walk away. I wish it wheeled. It would just fall <laughs> over and I'd walk away. <laughs> That's Literally, actually if I, funnier. If I breathe on it wrong, it's like... No! <laughs> uh, and I breathe on it a lot, let me tell you. Um... So the other mechanic that I'm pulling in from uh, Sense Sensibilities and Swordsmanship expansion is that we're going to kick off, uh, y'all remember from our other three episodes, we do have a cycle of play. Uh, and I'm going to kick it off instead of with a novel chapter, we are going to kick it off with a rooftop phase. Um, but I'm going to switch it to an action phase. I'm going to call it action phase for this because uh, the rooftop phase, uh, phase is pretty specific to like masked heroes, sort of like a Zorro influence. We're not really going that route. So I'm just going to call it the action phase, uh, which is more of a phase that's less going to be less about relationships and interpersonal things and more about uh, the action packed nature of things. Um, <laughs> quit making fun of me in chat. <laughs> I could see no. all the Scarlet Pimpernel, <laughs> exactly Norse, GG's. Um, also invented by women, superheroes. Yeah. No, Eric, we know women are great. <laughs> you don't have to tell us. I'm telling the audience because they might not. Yeah. yeah, chat, get it together. Love women more than you love anything else. Um, These are horny in books and we invent genres. Let's go. No. What'd you say? Bria? What? Nothing? To the game, please. The game. We, we are horny and we like no, books. Is that we what release our horny in books. Release yeah. the horny in books. That's what happens. We we we're like, like, I'm literarily <laughs> horny. <laughs> oh my god i haven't read scarlet pimple ne pimpernel norris don't get me oh my wrong god, the I know are about it. anyway scarlet yeah. really good. Good. Shit. it's very fun i yeah, also she... own the dvd of the of the movie one of the movies anyway it's very yeah good. woman said what if i invent batman hundreds of years before batman yep and then, then like, we're like him okay smart and funny like yeah <laughs> let's do that hmm Anyway, uh, TLDR, women are fucking amazing. Love them with your whole heart. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we're going to kick this off with our action phase. And so what I want to do as our, this is once again, a collaborative uh, novel writing process is I want, with all the information we have now, how do we want this opening scene to be set? 
Uh, we, I think we want to introduce the big bad in the midst of like the action of what he's doing. Um, and maybe Horatio's there. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We need to assign, we need to assign who plays who really quick. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm definitely playing, uh, the big bad. So I'm playing Matthias. Uh, but, uh, can we suggest again, when you pick someone to play, everybody can play one connection. Just make sure it's not someone who would who would interact with your major character very often. Um, someone's free to play Horatio, or I can. I think it'd be fun if someone played Horatio. I'd like yeah. to play Horatio. You want to yeah. play Horatio? Okay. I don't think y'all would interact very much. So no. Uh, will you copy paste your your name and pronouns there? Sure. Um, and everybody else, what are we thinking about connections? Mm, I'm down to play Annalisa. Uh, I like who is the younger sister? Older of... sister. Older. Oh, I'm looking at <clears throat> Amelie. I'm so sorry. No, I want to um, play Amelie because I think that's like the one person uh, oh, yeah. Mylin wouldn't talk to. Okay. Um, Terry, can you please fill out your relationships? They're, did. they're the they're default right now. Uh, it says relationship, e.g. Prudence's aunt. Oh, so will you put actually with yeah. her? No you. worries, no worries. Um, like sorry, and you. Terry, what did you say? Uh, sorry, I can't type it then. Next, what did you say? Sorry. Oh, I just said I'd take Annalisa. Okay, and that is... Who is that? <laughs> Annalisa is my older sister. Okay. She's the bookish one. The bookish okay. middle child who doesn't get out much. Okay, Next perfect. was like, yep, need that. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Okay. Uh, and then, Abria, you said Amelie? Mm hmm Um, okay. And then, Terry, what connection would you like to play? I would like to play... I just put fake dad for Spencer, because that's what you kept calling him. Um, <laughs> that works for me. <laughs> okay, great. Um, is someone... Shannon? Um... Am I, or would I be in a scene with her? You'd probably be likely to be in a scene with her, okay. but probably more likely to be in a scene with Constant, your mom. Right. Um, Finnegan? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> the description is still very good. <laughs> very good. Sounds hot. That's going to uh, make me laugh, I think, forever. So I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's OK. Um, perfect. OK, sorry. I forgot to do that earlier. Um, so now now we can talk about this opening action phase. What do y'all what do y'all want to see in that opening action phase? I think it should be an introduction to our big bad and uh, sort of like a, a little reveal of his evil plots. Um, but who else is there? What is, what is, where are we? What, what is happening? What is the action of the scene? We're in the middle of some sort of action. What is that? I think maybe he's, uh, he's showing off his facilities to some investors. So he's showing them like, the zombies or the zombies are not there. Maybe the zombies are not there, but at like, he's not showing that part, but he's showing off like, like, look at all this, like somehow showing off things about his facility to somebody i don't know okay um and who do we think the investors are is it potentially someone from eaton abbey yeah it would be it would make sense then if he's like showing it off to to spencer and maybe uh... yeah i like doing uh either eaton abbey or like the neighbors so if like the neighbors get overrun, that makes sense. I don't know. I'm up for whatever. Make it Spencer. The, the other know. thing, the other thing could be too. It's like um, it could be like maybe the investors are more on the magic side of things, and it's like a dark. Uh, they're like, oh yeah, like uh, we want to get into this sort of like free labor <laughs> to enhance our own riches. But I don't know. His plots are are most, mostly to be in total control. So I don't know that he would want to share that information okay. with other people, right? Yeah. Um. So let's say let's say he's pitching. Man, I would like to I would like to one of y'all to be in the scene at at least. 
Um, but I'm not sure. I guess, Eric, you'll be in the scene as Horatio. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then I'll be Matthias. Uh, and then maybe Negs, you're playing Annalisa. Maybe your parents, like, sent you to do this for them. Uh, like, you're the eldest sister and you're due to inherit, inherit the estate. So maybe they sent you to tour the facilities uh, to inquire about whether the investment is good or not. Okay. What do you think about that? Yeah, that works. Okay. Um, and then... Uh, and then maybe... Um, maybe, maybe Eva, you like tagged along. Maybe, maybe okay. Evan, maybe Evan and Mylan tagged along, but they're like outside or something. And they're waiting for, they're waiting for Annalisa to come out. Any excuse to go into town, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. What do you think, Abria? I love it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Want and gentry. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure everyone saw me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness uh d is that sound good abria or yeah that totally makes sense. some other ideas um can the reason my lind is a little interested like not in a gives the whole game away but like as a person that has some fake connectivity like does she sort of sense that there's something interesting happening here and she's just like oh yeah i'll tag along this place smells cool there's something happening. Well, I like it. Here, here's I like that idea, but I think maybe you tag along because uh, because Eva wants you to. Okay. Because she's in love with you, and just like is looking for ex right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's just looking for excuses to spend time with you. Isn't but it Eva? <laughs> am I doing it every time? Honestly, Eva, Eva, it doesn't matter. The Eva, this Eva, is the game. The this Eva, is the Eva. game of the, potato, of the episode. Potato, potato, potato. You know, <laughs> this is, this I, I did it as when people Eva. say my name. <laughs> I did it as Eva as a homage to Wally, because that's the other. Eee. Yeah. Um, Eva. Eva. Just keep and correcting that, me. I'm so that sorry. Was our, since that was our other game. Um, no, I don't mind. I'll still answer to it. People um, call me wrong name most of my life, and I'm just used to it. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> I feel that as well. <laughs> Savannah and Hannah just all day, every day, to be honest. Oh. Um, uh, okay, does that sound good? And then when you get there, let's start throwing resolve tokens out there to get a, get a feel of what's going on. This will basically act like, um, like a novel phase, but instead of the focus being on interpersonal relationships, it'll be more on action. And if something happens, like if there's a clash of some sort, then uh, we will go into what that causes. So if there's like a physical but a fight or like uh, uh, or some sort of like intense crossing of uh, streams or something, then there is a mechanic for that. So we'll get into it. Uh, okay, so the opening scene uh, is uh, there is a, a very delicious man uh, striding uh, across the catwalks of this uh, this immense facility that is filled with all of these empty te uh, textile tables. Uh, the workers have not even yet arrived. It is it is uh, just dawn and, and light is peering in through the very high windows. There's no windows uh, low to the ground in the facility, but you can see it peeking in on the high windows. And he is uh, sort of uh, very genteely stepping across the catwalk, looking down at, um, at the workers' uh, spots. And joining him uh, is uh is Annalisa, the eldest sister of the Saratoga family. Uh and what is she, what is she um wearing and what's sort of like her demeanor on this tour of the factory next? She looks like she's overwhelmed to be around loud noises and people moving. Like she is the definition of a homebody and it's just not her cup of tea to be in these types of situations in the first place. She's trying to uh, prepare herself for her, you know, role stepping up in the family a bit. But this is so uncomfortable. She kind of looks like someone who showed up to a costume party and didn't get the memo that it's not a costume party at all. And she's the only one in costume <laughs> no. and she's trying to look like she fits in, but she's yeah. so uncomfortable. It, it, because she's like too done up for that environment is that no she's more of so 
she she prefers to be left alone quietly with a book. So like the very fact that anyone respects her opinion and is deferring to her and she is making choices here. Uh, it's not that she doesn't want responsibility. It's that she wants responsibility through letter writing and not having to see people face to face. And she just looks out of place for having to be around humans she doesn't know and socially right. engaging with them, essentially. Right. Uh, as far as her like attire is concerned, I think she's dressed in a very dull and conservative way. Like she is, she's not someone who gets joy from wearing fun clothes that express their personality. Mm -hmm. It's something that she just wears whatever is put in her wardrobe, you know, at yeah. her disposal. I love that. Thank you. Uh, and then we have tra uh, trailing after both of them. Uh, we have Horatio Grimm, uh, who is perhaps looking a little grim. Eric, do you want to... Uh, describe uh, sort of Horatio's body language or his interaction with the environment. Yeah. What, do you, uh, what he's, what he's dressed as dressed uh, as is he dressed like a cat? Uh, yeah. Why did I say it like that? I'm so yeah. sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. He's a jellical cat and he has three names. No, uh, he, 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 he's, he's dressed. <laughs> he, he's dressed well. Like he's not, he's not underdressed. He's not overdressed. Uh, he's dressed very conservatively and he dressed very well. Uh, like, like, uh, like a, an English gentleman, his suit is a little big on him. And he, he, his, what you'll notice is his, he has, he constantly has like bags under his eyes and he looks rather tired and like he hasn't had much sleep that he's running on coffee and cigarettes, you know? Love it. <laughs> um this night is so weird <laughs> what a weird choice to <sighs> oh, oh my god uh terry's just listening to christmas music well <laughs> jingle the bells chaos. is on right now and it's so nice it's oh my goodness it's like it's christmas music from the other room is like the name of it and it's just like very like faint it's really nice <laughs> Um, so thank you, Eric. That was beautiful. Uh, so that's, that's the scene, uh, otherwise empty facility on the inside. Uh, and, uh, Matthias is pointing down to, uh, the workbenches and is like, yes, our output here is, uh, quite remarkable. I, I'm sure you've heard of it, uh, throughout the town at this point, uh, we're quite the talk of the local economy for, uh, the quickness in which we sprung up in the environment and the steadiness at which we maintain our output and productivity. Have you not, uh, Miss Saratoga? I was just about to inquire. Um, it seems that your business rose to prominence quite quickly. Uh, could you illuminate me on how you managed to grow so quickly? Well, it's actually a, a wonderful story. I come from humble beginnings, and so I've uh, dealt with a lot of working with my hands and getting in the dirt, uh, as you say, myself, and I just have uh, the insight knowledge of what it takes, which I think a lot of uh, people who have been in the business and inherited these sort of facilities uh, from their families, uh, fathers before them, fathers before them, do not have. They, uh, they, do, they do not have the knowledge of starting from the bottom because they've never had to. But I, but I have that insight and I absolutely take advantage of it. So you would call yourself a self-made man then, I assume? I would say so. I mean, certainly without uh, my humble partner, Horatio, I would be perhaps a, I don't know, a, a sixth of the man I am. Not yes, right, I, Horatio. Yes, I, one sixth sounds like the, uh, the amount. It sounds like maths. Oh, you're outside, <laughs> Ava. I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, what sounds like maths? What are you talking about? Oh, nothing. I'm just thinking about people and how they measure up. You're great. Thank you. 
Wait, why are we doing this again? We're just standing on the outside of a building. I don't understand why they don't let us in either. They should have let us in. We could just go in. Like, you think? What? Really? Who would stop us? I don't know, people. Mm. You have a lot to learn. And I want to go into the... <laughs> uh, I'm going to interrupt this really quick because I would love to know, like, uh, like how they're how they're looking and uh, and what their body language is towards each other. Um, anything like that? Uh, I think, Mylin, uh, I think we're just sitting in the carriage. Like, we got left in the car with the windows down while she handles business. Yeah. And Mylin is definitely, like, slumped in the seat, like feet up on the other side of the carriage like picking at her nails like deeply bored this is not why I play socialite to like come and do things that actual rich people have to deal with like secure their bag that's peasant shit so she just looks extremely bored right now and isn't really paying uh, intense attention to to Eva okay and, and how's Eva Eva is definitely paying intense attention to <laughs> my Lynn. I was like, wow, your, your nail beds are really nice. Thank you. Cuticle care is very important. Yeah, I try to make sure I get manicures whenever I can. Um, mm. Do you have a person that comes to do yours? Do you have a recommendation? Um, you know, the, the normal person. I try to keep mine really short. Yeah, no, it looks, it's very good. And um, you're very pretty. I I am? Yes. For the sake of moving forward past this part of the conversation, yes. You're very lovely. (laughs) Is that, okay, now I'm stuck there. I feel like that was Mm. trying to say something nice, but it came off like not that nice. So... Now my brain doesn't know how to um, deal with that information. So I'm going to take a moment. Thanks. Well, uh, can I sweep you up in this moment and we can go inside? Because it's I don't want to be in here waiting any longer. me up. So that sounds nice. Um, okay, whatever You're you young, said after that. You? <clears throat> what? I'm 21. Mm-hmm. That and means... the a picture of loveliness. How old are you? Mm. <laughs> I think with that, uh, <laughs> Mylan uh, sweeps open the door. Um, I think um, I think you can sweep open the door fine. I think uh, where you decide once you're inside the facility, where you decide to go when you go inside the facility might cost a resolve token. I am so. happy to spend a resolve token to not go where people are talking business because that's very, very boring. Okay. So where where do you think uh, Mylan heads with, uh, I imagine Eva in tow. Uh, so where are they all, are they speaking? Is he, is uh, Matthias like showing off the facility? Like, they're, Yeah, they're in the like catwalk. So they're on a level above you. Uh, so it's like you come in the entrance and then there's the stairs up to the catwalk. Uh, where he can sort of like patrol and look down on the facility and how it's functioning. And then out in the middle of um, the factory floor, there's all these uh, like worker areas. Uh, and then there's some other doors off to the side that are probably like offices and things like that. But if you're using a resolve office. token, you can invent a place that you are going. <laughs> so... um. I don't know. I, probably just like the offices downstairs. She's going to go just look through. I don't want to go to the, the floor and see the workers and like spoil anything, but. Just... Oh, no, no, no. The workers aren't there. Like it's very early morning and it's like uh, no one is. Uh... Okay. Then yeah, I want to go sniff around on the work floor and just catch a whiff of like. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you have a... Any keen, a, a keen sense of smell? Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's p- perfume. Someone here uh, loves hyacinth. That's a popular smell. Lavender, lavender. It's lavender. Do you not smell it? Oh, I was wearing some lavender today. Did you want to smell it? Mm-hmm. It's lovely. Thank you. <laughs> mm. This is nice. 
I'm having fun here with you, sniffing your arm. Jeez, Come every with me. time you say things, they sound like compliments, but also not at the same time. And like I said, my brain has a very hard time taking in the information. No, you're good. And I'm, uh, this is lovely for me. And I just want to like do the like girl hook arm into arm because she keeps stopping to like analyze stuff and I don't get to snoop around as much as I want. Okay. Um, you, you can do that. And then, uh, just spend a resolve token to sort of, um, the same resolve token that to, to check out the factory floor, uh, to sort of tell me what you're finding there. Uh, I think she catches a whiff of something like, on the floor that like she can't place what kind of magic it, it is but i think all magic leaves like that like sillage of like it's almost a perfume of like oh something interesting was happening here like this is the lingering like this is the end of a like a magical effect mm -hmm. and she's trying to just get a better whiff of it to figure out like is one of her friends from like the fake court like in and around and mm -hmm. she's sort of delightfully sniffing the air and walking around and trying to like look for signs of like sigils or something, you okay. know, more interesting than just people talking. Mm -hmm. Does Ava, um, Eva <laughs> have a reaction to that? I, are you all right? I'm, lo I just, if I could figure out the other lavender, it's not as lovely as your perfume, mm -hmm. but. Okay. So you're get, gathering information is what you're doing. You seem really smart. Oh, thank you. I am. Um, uh, yes, let's play a game, you and I. Not humble, but smart. Oh, thank you. Humility is a tool of oppression. Never be humble. Okay. When I figure out what I'm good at, I will not be humble about it. <sighs> you don't even have to wait. And I think influencing young people is a fun thing and I'm going to keep doing it. Stick with me. And now she's like invested in you. <laughs> like, yes. You're going to mold my mind or my body. Or I mean, my whatever. Like, you're going to mold me. You're my mentor. Mm. Sure. I like it. Mm. I like it a lot. Mm. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Uh, if you see then... anything interesting, let me know. What do you uh, mean I, by interesting? I don't know. Okay, great. I'll look out for that. Uh, and I think with that, we cut back up to the to the catwalk and uh, Matthias is going on about like uh, the way that the facility runs and how the textile machines are top of the line and uh, da 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 da. And, uh, and uh, when he notices, he he looks down and notices because it's just like a straight shot down to the uh, worker floor that these two women are just sort of like parading through the workspace and he stops in his tracks and he goes, uh, who um, seems we have some extra people here for the tour. Um, do you know these people, Miss Saratoga? Oh, my deepest apologies. Uh, it seems my sister, who I had bid to wait out front, took it upon herself to get a tour of the facility as well. Um, so sorry about that, truly. I, I told her to wait, and she has a, a, a bit of an independent streak. Well, uh, certainly no concern. Any member of the Saratoga family that we can introduce the facility, uh, to the facility, I mean, the better for us, I assume. Isn't that right, Horatio? And Horatio is, like, distracted, and he goes, really? Half. That's interesting. Uh, yes, Saratoga family. Yes, anyone. Wait, wait, wait. What's, is he talking to a ghost? Yeah. What's the ghost saying to him? The, go the ghost is telling him that uh, that uh, that she is not a member of the Saratoga family. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Who isn't? Uh, that uh, that uh, Eva isn't. Oh, I love that. Oh my god, uh, <clears throat> Horatio. Mm, yes. Isn't it good that we have multiple members of the Saratoga family here with us to introduce to our fine facilities? Yes. Yes, it is. 
Don't mind him. He's a, a morose young man. But um, he does good work. What work exactly do you do, Horatio? Um, I, I am a... We shouldn't keep your sister facilitator. waiting. Facilitator. I facilitate. Uh, and then with that, he's... Uh, uh, I almost said Horatio. Matthias sweeps down the stairs of the catwalk and strides over sort of abnormally fast uh, to your sister and uh, Mylan. Uh, and instead of walking right up to them, strides a bit past them uh, and posts his body in front of a couple of double doors that they were getting close to and then, go, and then goes, hello, uh, it is a pleasure to meet you. Uh, my name is Matthias Grave, the owner of this establishment. Uh, and uh, it is a pleasure to meet you. Who do I have a good acquaintance of meeting? I want to, like, nudge uh, Eva forward to introduce herself. Charmed. Eva he'll Saratoga? Take, he'll take your hand and, uh, and kiss it. Uh, <laughs> you can spend a resolve token if you want to recognize him. Because he used to work at the house. Ooh. Ooh, I will spend a resolve token. Okay. Uh, so you, I kind of don't want to recognize him at the same time, though. I don't know. Or is you that could also recognize him and say nothing? Okay. Or not recognize him. That's up to you. I'm just putting it out there. The resolve tokens are there for your leisure. Okay. Um, I'll recognize him, but okay. I'm not gonna uh, say anything. Go ahead and check out a resolve token. Um oh and also everyone has inner monologue tokens again. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's right. I can't wait to make Eric monologue 18 <laughs> times. Uh does anyone want to spend one on Terry right now? Since she just recognized someone who used to be a servant in her house now giving a family to her. Yeah, I definitely do. A volunteer. I spent mine. Go. Thank you. His face, ah, uh, he's the one that used to, I think he's the one that cooked, as they call, cooked the books, I think, at the house. I don't understand why someone would cook a book, though. Like, it doesn't seem like it would be good to eat. Like, I don't understand why they would do that. Would they chop up the pages? Well, maybe if you fried a page, everything's good fried. So maybe he did that. But I feel like he did something with with the I made the vanna disappear. Okay. Bye, <laughs> with Nana. the books. So he's very handsome though. So maybe is he is he single? Like I don't know. I, I don't know. This is weird. I'm conflicted. Nice to meet you. Enchanted. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. <laughs> You're seeing why I asked her to wait out front. <sighs> uh, well, no, yes, I. She's charming. I. Uh, or was that above game? <laughs> that was above game. That was above okay. Game. Yeah. American accent is always above sorry, game. Sorry, Easy sorry, to sorry, tell. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I do see now. I do see now. Um, yes. Well, and I think he. I think he catches that glimmer of recognition but shakes it off it's like hmm because he definitely knows you he definitely knows you and and when he shakes your hand there's a a sort of crackling negative energy that you can't sense but uh perhaps a nearby myelin uh could pick up on uh as he turns to her and goes and to who do i owe the pleasure uh, <clears throat> lady myelin uh, caro and I don't enjoy being touched. Thank you. And she just gives a little curtsy and steps uh, back. You will bow deeply to her and go, a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Lady I Carol. want to delicately sniff the air as he bows. Just Okay. Mm -hmm. He smells like, uh, he smells kind of like, like honeysuckle and cedar. Mm. <laughs> I think she next like is, makes- Next is me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I see she is for. into it. Into <laughs> it. We're all into it. Don't yeah, we honestly her. correct. Correct. <laughs> Stanny says, oh no, those are good smells. <laughs> <laughs> um 
Amazing. And then he'll, uh, I assume Horatio and, uh, and, uh, an Annalisa have caught up and are, are in the same area. And then he'll mm. go, uh, uh, well, this is amazing to have, uh, all this company here to take in our facilities. Uh, isn't that right, Horatio? Yes. Ah, Mylin, it's great to see you. Oh, we're just using first names now. Well, hello, Horatio. Oh, mm. wait, do you two know each other? Mm. In a matter of speaking, we run in some of the same circles. <laughs> mm. Friends of friends. I think Matthias is going to eye Horatio and be like, Mm-hmm. He doesn't he doesn't like that uh you have this sort of outside connection. Uh but he'll dismiss it and then sort of um very very indiscernibly uh sh- shuffle a little closer in front of the double doors he's standing in front of and go, uh well if there's no questions, uh there's not much to share about our facility. It's simple and that's what makes it work. So, yep. um, yes. Might is I there... ask? Go ahead. Um, forgive me. It seems your business has scaled exponentially. Thank you. In a very brief amount of time. Um, how do you actually operate such large facilities? Um, how have you managed to acquire so many employees so quickly? And where is that workforce coming from? Uh, well, of course, the surrounding area. I think you'd be surprised that before I opened my facility, the unemployment rate in the area was quite abhorrent. Uh, and with the starting rates that we are offering to set employees, we are boosting the local economy uh, to a degree that uh, I can't imagine will not be noticed by the Queen herself at some point. Oh, impressive. What are your normal hours? Because, you know, right now it's a bit of a ghost town. And she right. just is going to stare at Horatio when she says that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> yes, well, uh, we let the workers come in a bit later uh, in the day. And that also gives them morning times with their families, which we find uh, is quite, quite amenable for many people who are uh, trying to find that work-life balance, as it were. That's mm-hmm. very different. Thank you. Do you like uh, to cook still? Do you cook? I mean, do you cook? I um, I do like to cook. Thank you for asking after my interests. I must admit, usually on these factory tours, that does not come to mind. Is that why you let people come later so they can cook at home? Enjoy a nice breakfast and a sit in their whatever room of their choice with their family and enjoy the sun before having to plug away at the workday. Sorry, those questions felt weird. I'm sorry. Don't apologize for anything. You're good. And you have just as much right as anyone else here to ask whatever question you wish. You know, like, for example, if you cared about that sort of thing, why Mr. Grave uh, is barring our entrance from that room behind him? If you cared. Is that your kitchen? No, we do not. Oh, sorry, ma'am. If it's the kitchen, I would be quite interested to tour the facility. Uh, it would be nice to get a full and proper lay of the land. There is or... no kitchen on the facility. We did, as we, as our, our employees are well able to gain meals outside of here, we have no need for a kitchen. Uh, Even if they're here yeah, for overtime, you don't feed them. We that seems they are cruel. Well, they are well compensated for their work. Uh, the... And I've never heard a complaint out of them personally. Not once. Really? Not once. No complaints, not once from your workers? No. What kind of workers do you have that would not complain? I would dutiful. say contented, yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah, very I dutiful. don't think I've ever met 
someone who's in a working position who's not had some sort of complaint or something they needed to run up the chain of command, so to speak, as far as problems? I would say, if if you don't mind me answering this one, uh, Matthias, uh, our workers find their employment here beneficial because many of them could not find employment elsewhere. So, so uh, you offer... find people who are the lowest of the low and they have extreme gratitude for you is what you're saying. I would say yeah, we, get, we offer positions to those who would normally not be given such prestigious we don't you need to upon uh, the uh, friendless Eva, and Eva, Eva, it is unbecoming of a lady to grill Mr. Grimm and his associate thus. You told me to ask questions, so I am. I want to get a better picture of what is happening here. I think it we should that commend they are exploiting workers. Why don't we commend Horatio on his transparency thus far and move along? Will I ask uh, Eva, Miss Saratoga? Have you ever worked? Do you work? Have you ever worked a day in your life? Of course. Have your hands ever been sullied? Maybe not my hands. I get them manicured. I was just talking with Mylan about that outside. But I do have a sense of duty and I have to call upon people, run charity events, um, be present for conversations with people making sure that things are all right on the estate. I, uh, I a lot hate of to work. break this to you, Miss Saratoga, but most people would not consider that work. And I think for someone who has never experienced a true day of laborious effort in what is truly identified as work. You think I look work, like this, just like this every day? I don't just wake up like this. I believe what m my friend is saying that that those that work for us are you are their betters that that what is for you an intense day of work uh for those that are not used to that life used to a, a more simple life would seem like not very much my work. life is simple no i'm saying that those who are who live a simpler life such as our employees would see uh their betters like you and and see them as um, as not doing very much at all because they don't understand the full breadth of what it is you do in, I in the I feel day. strangely like I'm being insulted at the same time and talked down to. Miss Saratoga, to I know that you're used to that by now. Can we move forward? Yeah, Jesus. ending the conversation. Let's move on. <clears throat> My point being, perhaps I am more apt to speak on the nature of laborious work as I have a background in it. Mm. And I can tell you that a hard day's work is quite fulfilling and the implication of exploitation is quite untoward and I do not appreciate it. I've cooked before too. Mm. I do not cook for work, Miss Saratoga. I feel like you have in the past somehow. I run this facility. I am the owner and operator. I produce and I sell textiles and I employ many a person who would not otherwise find themselves in employment. Would anyone like to see some swatches? Uh, and I would like to use one of Horatio's uh, resolve tokens to take us to like uh, samplings of like swatches of fabric yeah. and stuff like that in another room. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, in in this moment, like, uh, is there maybe like a spirit in the factory that is like saying something to Horatio as he makes yeah. that move? <laughs> yeah, like it's there. There's um, uh, the man who ran this factory that we that we it, this factory was derelict when we bought it or when uh, Matthias bought it uh, because the 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 original owner had died and it had gone to ruin so we'd spent money to rebuild it so his ghost still haunts it and he was he was a he was a very apt businessman in his time so he's like he's like moving along son moving along and like swatches women I'm happy to fabrics. spend the monologue yeah. token to have Eric monologue for this ghost or with this yeah! ghost yes I like hear whatever the, ghost, the conversation is the I'm ghost super down yeah <laughs> okay Terry genius. <laughs> Just what I wanted. I was like, yes, tell me more about this ghost. 
<laughs> oh, you, you lot, you don't, you wouldn't know how to sell water to a fireman. For, just, you get the women what they want. They want the swatches, they want the fabrics, they want the, 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 the frilly laces. Move them on. Don't talk about, don't insult them, don't try and tell them about what it's like to live in a, a simple life and how, how their lives is not as, as good as it. You don't, you ain't going to sell nothing that you do like that. Just push them along, uh, show them all the, the flashy things, make them feel like the queen of uh, uh, England, and then uh, push them out and take their monies. That's all you got to do. <laughs> I really didn't think we'd hear the monologue of a ghost today, but I'm very hey! grateful. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. That was beautiful. That was um, fun and, a lot. That and I think with that, uh, the, uh, Horatio does successfully lead everyone over to like a corner of the factory floor that has swatches sitting out for uh, advisements and everybody gets properly bored by that until um, until you leave. Uh, <laughs> unless, uh, Bria, what's the, what are those eyes? What? No, you're good. Uh, no, were you going to say something? No, not at all. Okay, I thought you were like, but wait, I want no, to no, do no. it. No, no, I want no. To She's do just theme. always bored. No, not yet. Perfect. I see. Um, so we'll close out that uh, action phase and we'll enter our first novel chapter phase. Um, and just like in the original Good Society, would y'all like this to be uh, an event phase? Would you like it to be um, like a visitation? Uh, one where we do sort of like little vignettes with each other or what? what's what's everybody thinking after that? Uh, everything you know above game and the interactions we just had in the action phase. I think, I mean, I think it would be nice to do like a sort of event, like a dinner or something like that. Like they, they've finalized the things it's been it, and, and, you know, they're starting to make money. It's like a celebration. Like finally we, this is our, we're starting, we're going to make money soon. We've invested in all that stuff. Okay. So who all, who all do we think is at the dinner? Is that, is that sound good to everybody or did anybody else have a different idea? Dinner a sounds, hooray money dinner? Sounds that sounds great. great. A hooray money dinner? So who all is at the dinner? Um, I mean, is this like an event or are we just saying that this is the family getting like hyped and just doing like an extra nice dinner? I think dinner? that's an event. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, you, everyone, all the major characters would be there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, of course. Everyone's the, there. Eric would be there. Uh, Eric and Eggs would be there in a service capacity, but it could even be like, um, like such of a celebration that it's like, oh, they they allow the servants a glass of wine, <laughs> you know, like something uncomfortable like that, you know. They uh, get the cheap wine. The servants so. have gotten into the sherry again, but that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> well, let's do let's do an upstairs and a downstairs vignette then so instead of a major event let's do let's start with uh the upstairs and then we'll have uh eric and negs you play your alternative character so negs play annalisa um and then is it just the family or are like horatio and matthias there too i think they should be there if we're all celebrating okay. hooray money then. okay yeah. then eric you'll play horatio uh and then uh terry you will play yourself you play yourself, Abria. Um, and then uh, I will pick up uh, Constance and Spencer and Shannon if if need be. Yeah. All right. Does anybody want to set the scene as far as uh, like how how this dinner looks or what's like the celebratory food that they dish out? Or I would also like to know it's like so they they sign on to invest with this textile company. Is that what we're okay? And then it's like, so. what what does that investment look like? Is it like, okay, we just give you a large sum of money and we expect a return at some point, or so daddy says I'm going to get clothes because they have so many materials and I can't <laughs> wait to expand my wardrobe. <laughs> maybe maybe we uh or the not we the the family owns some land somewhere that that uh that we've sold to matthias for his uses uh, as part of the investment and like we get a portion of profits because of that i like that so giving up giving up land which is arguably like the most valuable thing right yeah that you can like, not like whole things but like like letting him like because often they'll like rent out section like they'll let people right. like, farm on this section okay you know? i think yeah. for for matthias's schemes 
I think what he would want is that uh, he pays nothing for the land and promises you a return on on the investment of of lending it free of charge to him. Yeah. yeah. Is that fair? Okay, cool. Uh, then let's do that. Then everybody's at the table. Everybody's in good spirits. Uh, and and we're eating some. Uh, Mylin has uh, has impressed upon the family uh, how important it is to like not eat meat. And this is a vegetarian feast because Mylin is like, I made one choice about the animals and caught some heat for that. So now this is my entire identity. And I think normally there'd be a lot of pushback for this, but she's yeah. using some of her like glamour magic to be like, no, y'all are vegetarian. Yeah, now we're vegetarian, <laughs> but go ahead and make all of the vegetarian stuff look like animals. You can shape it however you want, but right. we're not eating animals. So <laughs> it's even fussier than it would be if they were just cooking yeah. like a bird. I love like, it. I no. love it. Just out of control. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so we're all seated. We're all seated at the table, uh, and the camera zooms in. And I think it, uh, I think it sweeps down. It starts from behind the shoulders of like the uh, the heads of the estate, and then across the entire table of these sort of weird amalgamated vegetarian uh, dishes. And then it hits the other end of the table where Matthias is. Uh, is sitting and looking very pleased with himself. And there's this red glimmer uh, to his pupils as he uh, digs into the food. Uh, and then he goes, so thank you so much for this lovely feast here tonight. I dare say I've never had anything like it. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, we must have the best for a celebration such as this. I agree. I, I feel like our futures are very uh, fortuitous, very positive in uh, where we will all go together and the money to be made, of course. Cheers to money or whatever. To money. Money or whatever. <laughs> and clothes. I heard I'm going to have lots of new clothes because of the textiles you have. Oh, that's right. I, I, I think anything is at your disposal, absolutely, when it comes to that. Uh, of course, oh, giving... I love fashions. Giving the land free of charge, uh, of course, with the return on investment, but also, in addition to that, adorning your frame with whatever your heart desires, of course. And I know that desire must be immense and endless. Okay. As most of them are. Um, might I inquire, Mr. Grave, we spoke much leading up to the, uh, resolution of this deal, um, about the particulars of how much land and when and when we might see a return, but I don't believe we ever discussed what exactly it is you intend to do with the land we are gifting you. Well, of course, I mean... A brilliant, a brilliant observation, my dear Miss Saratoga. Uh, for being uh, the eldest daughter in the family, you sure hold that title with great strength uh, and fortitude. Uh, but yes, I plan to build an entirely new factory because as it turns out, there is no lack of workers in the area and we endeavor to increase the economy, the local economy, and hire more and more people so that more and more families can see something spirited this holiday season. Something really special and exciting. I'm starting to feel a bit like Eva, where I feel like you're implying something different than what you're saying. Right? Oh, sorry. Mm. <laughs> I simply mean to apply, imply that uh, not all families are able to have a happy holiday. You know, with yes, their it's very sad or however we feel about it. Destitution. Um, I'm sure even many of the uh, people you have in the employ of this house perhaps are not uh, celebrating the holiday season to the degree that they wish. They're having sherry downstairs right now. A That's glass of sherry every six months. Yes. That is sure that yes. enough? A treat, absolutely. Who could ask for more? I couldn't but, have said it better myself. So we just endeavor to perhaps everybody can buy their 
ourselves a glass of sherry on Christmas Eve. You seem bitter about something. And I'm not sure if it's because you weren't a good cook in the past. Okay, what's this cook thing? What is happening? Eva, please speak your mind at aggressive detail. I think I like this. As something about Matthias, I'm sorry. You remind me of someone we once knew who was a cook in this house. I... That's, it's tot- It's absolutely fine, uh, Miss Saratoga. I take no offense to that. As I have told you time and time again, I have much respect for the working class. I don't mean, I don't mind being compared to them. Uh, but uh, I, again, I've never worked as a cook myself. No. Something but you worked in this cooking, house. Something about cooking books, though. Right? <gasps> oh. What would make you say that, uh, Lady Mylan? What? What? Say what? I'm sorry, I'm busy getting my drink filled. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that! Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I believe the, the young Miss Saratoga implied that you worked here in the past? Cooking oh. books? Cooking books? I don't um, understand if you fried the pages or if you just simply <laughs> pan seared them. Just uh, please. <laughs> I want to give a very pointed look to Shannon and just see if she can like confirm any of this for me because I know she had, she knows that hot goss. She's a million years old. Uh, okay, I think you're gonna have to spend a resolve yeah, token that's fine. <laughs> and tell me what her reaction would be. Um, I think she's she is also older, so maybe her her memory is fading a little bit. Um, do we want her to not know and recognize? I'm fine with that. No, I've that's spent a result, so I'm gonna do what you want, my love. Okay, then I think Shannon is just like she's in her glass and then clears her throat a little bit. And as she like puts the glass down, she like looks up and just nods a little bit. And that actually is the thing that shuts uh Mylan up. She just wanted confirmation. Mm. Oh, mm. Okay. I like to imagine. I like to imagine her as like uh, the grandma from Knives Out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she's that old. <laughs> That's a million ransom. Ransom. I, I do like that though, where she really doesn't uh, doesn't talk that much, but uh, maybe engages most with Mylan. Yeah, <laughs> in one way. Hey, oh yeah, she's uh, tired of the life of excessive propriety. Love it. Um, so I, I think it's, oh, <laughs> I think <laughs> yep. that damn giggle weed. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, and I think she, I think it's almost a look of like, like she knows what's going on and she's like, I want to see how this plays out. Like yeah. nothing interesting ever fucking happens here. Like Mylan, let it happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's like, oh shit. Okay. I'm sorry. They haven't invented TV yet. <laughs> Yeah. I will go back to. There's Matt, a look with like I, my shows. I need I my stories. I need I my stories. I give her a look like, okay, Shannon. I will go back to harassing Horatio, and this will be fine. Um, I would, I would love to hear more from Horatio right now because uh, he has. We'd established uh, when we were cultivating the story that he is uh, familiar with this house. Uh, not only because of this venture, but because he has been there before to uh, to exercise some sort of spirit or talk with some sort of remaining spirit. So uh, I think um, maybe uh, Constance uh, interrupts this very awkward line of questioning is like, and it's just like, Horatio, please tell me. It's so interesting to see you in this new line of work, but I must know about any of your stories that have to do with you know, your other line of work. Uh, yes, uh, ma'am. Uh, as I'm sure you would be quite aware, uh, my other line of work uh, does not keep me fed and clothed. So uh, ventures like this are how one, one stays above water. Um, but yes, uh, I did have... Um, it, I have not had as many adventures as of late. Uh, I did... Um, well, I, I did, I was asked 
to uh, to a small town in Italy uh, for my advice. They believed uh, there was a haunting at a manor. Um, there was uh, a presence there, although uh, n- more demonic than spiritual. Oh no! Oh, it was quite yes. quite frightening and a uh, bit outside of uh, my normal fare. Uh, we what ended did up- you do? Uh, well, uh, I had to consult. Uh, I had to re- talk to a, a contact at the Vatican about how one would exercise such a thing from a space like that. Oh, uh, but how honorable! Yes, I mean it. It, it is my burden, I would say, to to bear, uh, to deal you with. Like it though, right? Not especially, no. Um, not. A uh, lot more sleepless nights than I would enjoy uh, when when those that have passed speak to you. They keep you up all night speaking. Oh, well, you can't. You can't diminish your gift. That would be wrong. Uh, I mean, certainly feels like a curse some days, but uh, the Lord gave it to me and... I do with it the best I can. You know, perhaps after dinner, uh, you could just, since you're here and everything, you could just contact the late Mr. Eaton another time for us. I'm sure, I'm sure Dame Eaton misses him dearly and would like to communicate with him once again through you, of course. I mean, if you're willing, I mean, you're here, but if it's not a trouble, but if it is a trouble... No, no. If, if if the late Mister Eden is here and wishes to speak, and I would like to use a resolve token to like, he looks over and he sees a ghost of the late Eden. Who's like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> you don't need to use a resolve yeah. token. <laughs> he's like, he's like, no, 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 he's no, like, no. If, if he is available, uh, you know, not not all that pass stay. It is only those that feel that they have much. To leave behind, and I can't speak for all of them, but I, right. we can always attempt. Perhaps last time you spoke with him, perhaps that was enough, and he passed on. She reaches over have... and grabs her mother's hand and squeezes it and looks teary eyed at her. <laughs> what were you going to say, Eric? No, I was done talking. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was done talking. What do you think of it, my dear Annalisa? We must see him again, mustn't we? On this a day of celebration, he would be so proud of our family. Yes, Daddy would be so happy. Do you think? Are you sure? He's not your daddy. Your dad's right there. (laughs) (laughs) Grandpa. Talking about Grandpa. Yeah, your daddy. Oh, my oh. daddy. <laughs> yes, indeed, my daddy. Did you not get that? I didn't hear that. <laughs> I'm, that's what was happening Spencer, there. are you alive? <clears throat> yes, I'm quite present and living. <laughs> are you... Yes, but there's also a ghost here right now? How great. Uh, it sounds a bit frightening to me. Um... If you insist, I'm I I might just sit in the back and um keep keep my distance from such activity. Well you would never you don't be wanna... so rude to your grandfather. You not, don't want to talk with the ghosts. Not rude. I heavens no, never rude. Just doesn't it frighten you a bit to speak with those who aren't there? Doesn't it seem a bit Devil dealing. Annalisa, in the presence of Mr. Grimm, you say this. Someone we have just made a great deal with, you say devil dealing. In my book, that's usually where it comes from. Yes, Mr. Grimm, are you the devil? I I am not, as far as I'm aware. Uh, But I imagine. You would have to tell us if you were, because that's how it works. Mm. No. I believe if I were, I would I would conceal that fact. So um, you might be still, even though you're saying that you're not. Just strange uh, thing to say, Mr. Grimm. <laughs> I apologize. 
Yes, but I do understand your apprehension. Um, what my gift is, I would say, outside the realm of natural. Supranatural, you know. It is um, not for the faint of heart and can uh, and he tries to like not look at Matthias and gifts like this can often be used by lesser men for bad things if they are not careful I think in that moment Matthias takes a very aggressive bite of his tofurkey <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it chomps away at us that he looks, uh, stares over at uh, Mat- uh, at, uh, Horatio. See? See, Annalisa, you just need to strengthen your resolve. Bolster it. Not for the faint of heart. You're a strong girl. Inquisitive, even. This should be something of interest and import to you. I suppose I could watch on. Mr. Grimm, how many ghosts are in this room right now, not inclusive of my attention span for this constant demurring? Miss it, Caro. It, mm. is not, it is not as if they are in the room like you and I are. They are, it is hard to describe. They are sometimes, it is a presence as if someone's standing behind you that you only just realize, and sometimes you don't realize. But it, it's not as if they're just sitting in a chair watching. So you summon them. I am able to connect to those that are nearby if they are willing. I guess is the best way to put it. And if they're not, can you can you not intervene with them or intercede? I honestly, when they are not interested, I've not pushed it. Perhaps I could if I chose, but I well, feel I'm that that's so curious if there's some like ghost that doesn't want to be talked to, but you kind of that, like want to talk to them and like want to know a little more about them. That it has you happened. I have. Ask them more out. questions. Or... I have reached out before to presences and found them, but found them not wanting communication with me for one reason or the other. It's who can tell with those that are spirits. Uh, and I choose to not push the issue with them. Ooh, tread lightly, Mr. Grimm. You are running the risk of becoming very interesting. Mm. <laughs> You find him very interesting. Yes. Uh, And I think with that, uh, Matthias sort of, um, he coughs and then is like, I mean, yes, all of this is well and good, but uh, of course we must acknowledge that Horatio is in a much more lucrative and and, and of import line of work now and has much less time for such dabbling. True. True. Call it dabbling. His work. You're insulting his work. No, the amount I of time call... that he puts into the work he does for me is quite commendable. The the work I do for Matthias is a job that I dedicate myself to, that I gain satisfaction from. The other thing is more of a a, a passing hobby that I, to be honest, wouldn't mind if it went away. Like many childhood hobbies. Ugh. Well. Seems like a waste. You have a power. Thank you, Eva. Right. Well, I think many of us uh, seem to find the potential in others that they are unable to see in themselves. True. Isn't that right, Miss Annalisa? Um, quite, yes. And I, I, I think with that, like Annalisa looking very uncomfortable and Matthias locking eyes with her and having this like red glint 
to his gaze, we sort of pan back as the conversation uh, goes back in. Uh, and with that, we're going to take our break. Uh, and then we'll be back for two more hours of this shenanigans. So thank you all so much. Uh, already, uh, if you want to help with our sub goals, we're at 308 at the start of stream. At 350, you unlock an additional resolve token. At 400, you unlock a monologue to token. And at 500, uh, you will unlock more good society down the road. So uh, do hit that sub button if you haven't already. Uh, give some subs if you want to support the channel. We only get to do this because of y'all's uh, generosity and support. Uh, so it, of course, helps a lot. Uh, compost the rich. <laughs> I've somehow not heard that before. Uh, but yeah, during the break, take care of yourselves, uh, take care of each other, and we'll see you back here in about five-ish minutes. Yeah, because they said the rich don't taste good. You don't want to eat them. You want to yeah, compost them. Right. I think that's <laughs> fair. Hey! Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome, Bria. If you giggle, I giggle. Those are the rules. <laughs> it's the rules. We'll make them. Welcome back to uh, the zombified episode of Good Society that we are playing for you today. I hope you took care of yourselves during the break and got some water and food and did the bathrooms. I got a pickle. And, uh, Does that count? Dude, yeah, it, it doesn't count as going to the bathroom. I got but... some Texas toast. Ooh, I ate, It was um, delicious. I ate a bunch I've... of brie on crackers because I have not eaten today. So I was like, I filled a pewter mug crackers? from a community college I didn't go to with, with diet root beer and i got another beer <laughs> eric's whole sentence was an adventure you guys next what did you do on your break <laughs> stared into the void and cried a little inside i mean that goes without saying we all did that too right 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 right, right you can right. do that on stream too i don't know <laughs> right 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 i love you so much next <laughs> as we scream into the void into the void <laughs> The as existential version of like the millennial version of Elsa is oh yeah, my god that, so. I love that if she <laughs> was if she was hot topicked up I would be in heaven oh my god <laughs> oh my god I love hot topics still to this day I've, I'm such a grandma when I go in there though like I love it <laughs> I love that girl. who's been to a mall ever do you Not have any Invader Zim shirts I always just like <laughs> Just Johnny the homicidal maniac. Do you have any of those? Oh my god, you guys know about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. My, god. my favorite hop topic memory was going uh there with my dad so he could buy hair dye. Uh because he wanted to dye his hair the same color as his phone case. <laughs> those are really good priorities. This is a oh. very short but very good story. <laughs> oh, that was amazing. <laughs> Honestly, Eric, king of the two sentence story. Like oh. you take us on a journey. You were such a good storyteller. Holy so goodness. many things. I I'm going to call you Eric Baby Shoes Riker from now on for just nailing that story in as few <laughs> words as possible. Oh, God. oh my God. Anyway. <laughs> I'm going to be thinking about that for like a month. Um, <laughs> such a wild story. <laughs> oh my God. Um, okay, so we're in the midst of. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We're in the midst of a novel chapter phase. Um, and we just saw the dinner at the table um, with the family who just signed a deal with Matthias at the textile factory for a new uh, swath of land with the promise of returns in the future. Uh, so their bank account is looking quite, um, quite precarious at the moment, uh, but in a positive way, in a good way. Who knows? Um, but I want to see what's going on downstairs. So let us, uh, let us go, uh, to the downstairs with everyone has a single glass of sherry, which a glass of sherry is like this. These be, <laughs> it's like These a thimble. A thimble. They, get it, they get it once every <laughs> six muted, months, yeah. <laughs> once every six months. Uh, so we got Felicity down there, uh, played by Nega Oryx and we've got Reginald Gross. Uh, sorry, gross. We just say it. It's gross. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to make it fancy. Uh, right. And Reginald Gross, who is the head of uh, uh, of the servants. Um, and we also have, and we have another um, oh, servant. Yes. Who was Finnegan. It? Right? Finnegan Trafford. That's right. 
uh, an, a footman who is also downstairs and celebrating. Right, right, right. And, is it yeah, Amelie and, also a servant? Yeah, Amelie as well. Yes, Amelie played by Abria. Okay. Uh, and Terry plays Finnegan. Finnegan. So y'all are down there. Can uh, y'all set the scene for me what this looks like? Kind of might look like Eric's background a little bit. Yeah, but I Googled uh, uh, Downton Abbey downstairs. <laughs> I recognize it immediately. I loved um, Downton Abbey. Also don't know this reference, but we are at Eaton Abbey, so close enough. <laughs> oh my God, Vanna. I know, it's, listen, have I, I ever know. seen anything? No. No, no, it's fine. So... <laughs> She's new here. <laughs> you don't Bitch, even go here. <laughs> Um, so, uh, y'all, y'all describe the downstairs together. Paint me a word picture as the Bria would say. I think I picture the, any areas inhabited by the servants where they are able to get like a brief moment of rest or relaxation or anything of the sort to immediately be very clickish. I don't know if if everyone else agrees, but I picture that being like they have so so little time to socialize that when they do, they have their own social structure. Absolutely, There's ranks within the ranks for sure. Yeah, oh, exactly. absolutely, mm-hmm. definitely. Uh, what about uh, the environment? Like, uh, how is it compared to the quote unquote upstairs? I think it's very clean, but very austere in comparison. And it's very uh, like mm-hmm. regimented, I would say. Function. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like it's every, there's a ton of stuff down here. And like, you can tell that the decor, like styling is part of the house, but like where it's like art and like little art objects everywhere, it's just like pans and silverware and like everything's just out and like perfectly ordered in its place. So it's like the functional equivalent of upstairs. Okay. Which is- so like ready a, for a service at any moment in time. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. I like that. Every I'll object's at the ready. Exactly. Uh, and do we find sort of all of our four characters together or are they in different cliques, as you said? Uh, so there's a thing in Down Abbey that's a lot like a uh, family meal for restaurants, if that's an analogy that lands, where yeah. they all kind of eat together. I get together. that reference. I worked in Yay. the service industry for 10 years. <laughs> Perfect. I, I tried very hard because, yeah, they all like eat together. Uh, once the like main family upstairs mm-hmm. is taken care of, they all kind of eat and vibe for a little bit and then go about whatever their like post dinner assignments are mm-hmm. as they all split up again. So, so they're sitting around sort of at the table. Ju- it's just this like almost immediate juxtapose of what's going on upstairs. Uh, we have a similar scene at a dinner table. Um, but perhaps the the feast that we sell upstairs is much more scant uh, down here and the silverware a lot less uh, sparkling and the dishes much more plain uh, and the chairs much more uh, precarious. Uh, but everybody is sitting around and enjoying their meal and celebrating that they get their glass of sherry that they get once every six months. Uh, and can we say the mood is uh, positive? Is that fair or I joyous? So. Sort of celebratory in, in a way as much as it can be. Yeah. Um, so yeah, take it away, fam. I've literally never had sherry. This is very exciting for me. Not, Ooh, I don't not. like it very much. No, no, I don't like I'll it. Have, I'll have yours. Yeah, it's go fine. ahead. Go ahead. You'll grow. You'll grow to like it. It's a treat, once in a while. And in the meantime, you can feel free to always give yours to me instead. Thank you. You're welcome. What? Nothing. I'm just a little disappointed. Like they're going to make a bunch of money or whatever, and we're just. We get a glass of very bad tasting alcohol. It doesn't and taste fair. that bad. Why? Mm-hmm. Why would we get anything else? They they put together a deal uh, for land and money. And what what have you done? You you cleaned some floors. Yeah, when you say it like that, it's fine. I'm fine. I'm sorry I said anything. We do what we do, so they may do what they do. 
Right. And when you're older, Amelie, okay? Everyone keeps saying that. Fine. Um, hooray for them. I'm very happy for all of them. And if their being successful means that we get half of a night off, then we're fine. Then I'm very happy for all of us. God bless rising, us, everyone. A rising tide raises all ships. Correct. Just think, the more business they bring in, the more successful they are, the more there is for us to do, the finer estate they will have, and... The more the floors will have to clean. <laughs> the nice True. floors you'll have to clean. And job security. That's fair. There is a war on, I think. <laughs> you think... There will always be wars. I don't read the news. Nor do I, but there will always be wars. Uh, there's not much call for the reading of news. It only distracts us from our duty. <laughs> well, a girl's duty. mind needs somewhere to drift to while she's working. If it helps her get her tasks done faster, what difference does it make? Hmm. No, this is if, so smart. If it doesn't interfere with your work, I don't might rightly care where your mind is. That's what I thought. And she's Sometimes, going to turn and give a little nod to her sister, like we won that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She gives a little fist pump, like, oh yeah. And eats a potato. I don't know. <laughs> It's probably all potatoes, yeah. It's potatoes. <laughs> it's like scallop potatoes, mashed potatoes, candied yams, and more Ice potato. potatoes, boiled yeah. potatoes. And they were trying to figure out on the side. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, why aren't we allowed to eat meat just because they're not eating meat upstairs? You just answered your own question. Uh, anyway, <laughs> she just goes back to being a little petulant and surly. You don't like potatoes ten ways. No, I love potatoes. But my bones feel bad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I've got rickets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Fear for us. <laughs> when the zombies show up, your brittle little bones are gonna be the first. Gonna to crumble. <laughs> That's right. Oh, oh! Can I spend one of my uh, tokens or one of my resolve tokens to have noticed that upstairs is none other than Matthias' grave? <gasps> Ooh, would you know that? Because uh, you're the younger sister, right? How long ago was he a member of the house? Because I am uh, a fucking toddler or something. I don't know. I'm very well, I'm thinking it was at least a decade ago. Oh, yeah. Then she wouldn't yeah. have noticed. That's fine. We could, I mean, you could <clears throat> notice who he is. And, you know, maybe it seems like the siblings have a close bond. Maybe that's a bit of a game they play is she's interested in the comings and goings of the house. And so she'll excitedly describe everyone she sees. And her sister will, you know, try and... Uh, either say who it is or or make up a story about who that person might be just to keep her sister entertained. And, you know, this time around, when you say that, uh, Felicity actually does realize who that is and, and fills her in. I like that. Yeah. Can we do that? And I'll spend a token for that. Yes, that sounds great. All right. So here's who I saw. And I just described. <laughs> Upstairs. I want to hear. I want to hear her description of him. So upstairs, before I came down, um, sissy, I saw a man. Um, he looked like. Uh, how do I describe him? Like you know, a uh, sort of dark olive complexion, very handsome, nicely dressed. Um, his face looks like he is a uh, constant. Yeah, thank you for reminding because I super forgot. Curly so hair, hot. bit of a so beard. Hot. So hot. Um, yeah. Kind of like a call urban type. But... I think with the resolve token, you probably heard someone call him Matthias. Yeah. And probably his name probably has his a full name. Yeah. Or like Mr. Grave or something like that. Yeah, he has one of those spooky names. 
like Yankee. like ghost or grave or shovel. Um, a grave. I don't remember. Mm, mm, mm -hmm. Did you by any chance catch his first name? Was it Matthias? That's the one. Wait, why do you know that? He used to work here. Hmm. What do you mean? Because he was upstairs and he was dressed very nice and was very handsome. And I think he looked at me twice and we're going to get married. <clears throat> hmm. Yes. Uh, excuse Mat me. Matthias Grave is a snake of a man unbefitting to eat upstairs. Well, that's he should just he's... eat books that he cooked. <laughs> Different character. <laughs> I'm aware. I was trying to do a crossover thing. That's a crossover I'm just episode. Just <laughs> I was trying to add crossover. Your crossover. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Mr. Gross. Might I inquire as to why you hold such a opinion of him? Well, maybe it's the sherry going to my head. But Matthias did work here for a time. Too long, if you ask me. And was summarily thrown out for gross incompetence. You're gross, though. <laughs> You're not incompetent. You're no. one of the best people here, and anything that gross has to say is true. Wait, but he wouldn't have identified himself to anyone upstairs as having previously worked here. So what business has he coming back to his old place of work? And looking that good. Oh. oh. No, what? Sorry. <clears throat> I, Do you think he remembers me? I am not aware of why he was invited to dinner. Nor is it my or any of your businesses. Yes, sir. I um, apologize if I'm speaking out of turn. It's not our business as individuals, but it is precisely our business in terms of serving the household. If he's here for nefarious purposes, and a man of such character as you've described, of course, would be, then we would be remiss if we did not do something about this. All we can do is our jobs to the best of our ability and keep an eye on how many forks there were when we put them out and how many there are now. Well, he's forks a bad boy. aren't going mm. to help the family if he's here with ulterior motives. It's our duty. Matthias will speak and twist words as he always will and we must do our duty to help the family as we always do <clears throat> Felicity's just seething she just goes quiet and like you it's can our see duty her cheeks getting so like beet red flush just sitting there kind of staring at the table thinking are you all right, Felicity? Fine, thank you. You seem not all right. May I help in any way? I just... I don't have a good feeling about this, and the last... The last thing I want to do is be associated with another failure for the family I can't stand to be lowered any more in their regard is there something you think we can do to help Felicity I I understand your your feelings I have worked at Eaton Abbey nearly all my life a million years <coughs> <coughs> quite and I can assure you that Eaton Abbey has survived many storms. It survived Matthias Grave once before, and it will survive him again. A 
And how did it survive him? Was it letting him run amok and do as he pleased, or was it with intervention on the part of those who meant well? Now is the moment for us to intervene. Well, I'm sure you, as much as all of you understand, that my job as caretaker is not just to the family, but to you all as well, that I protect all sides. That is why when somebody breaks a glass, I don't immediately fire them. I protect you, as I protect everyone here. So if I noticed one of you were purposefully breaking glasses or doing something untowards, that is when my protection would be null and void. If you, we are to see things that would lead us to speak out to the master, please speak to me, and I will determine whether or not the family needs to know. I think there's a, a servant farther down the table that has been like listening in and is like, so you want us to spy on him? <gasps> no. I would like to volunteer to spy on him. That is Sounds not what like I said. Sounds like you want us to spy on him. I say merely that you will, should be dutiful servants to your masters and watch over them as you would watch over your own family. I would take a more active role in protecting my own family, but I will respect your orders, Mr. Gross. Yes, Mr. Gross. I think that the other servant will lean into... Uh, Amelie and be like, I'm pretty sure he won't us to spy on him. We're definitely going to spy on him. I'm going to get in really close and like make him fall in love with me and tell me all of his secrets. I don't think oh, he wow. asked for that. Oh, Please. yeah. I just like to, I would do this for any of my family. <laughs> You'd fall in love with anyone for your family. No. Ignore You her. could fall in love with me for your family. Oof. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I need to drink sissy I, give me the sherry back please oh. I think with that we see like we see like Amelie pushing the face off of this man like out of her uh we'll say it's another footman a friend uh a friend of Finnegan's and <laughs> and uh and we see that as we sort of like uh pull back and uh fade to black uh, and with that, we are going to uh, skip a couple of phases that we normally do since we're doing sort of a uh, piece together one shot, Frankenstein one shot, as someone yeah. called it earlier. Uh, so, and we're going to go straight to the epistolary phase. So this will work the same as the regular game. Anyone who, uh, everybody uh, that's playing gets to write uh, as two, two opportunities to either write a letter or compel somebody else to write a letter letter using a resolve token so who's ready uh i'll go oh sorry go ahead no please after you i was expressing excitement not ideas just enthusiasm <laughs> okay um i think my lynn is going to send a letter yeah i think she's got to send a letter to 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 horatio grimm She's just deeply curious about what's yeah. happening here. Let's hear it. Oh, uh, my darling Mr. Grimm. Uh, let me say first and foremost, a joke that I missed at the dinner when you were so graciously attending and refusing to do anything at all interesting at Eaton Abbey. And if you're offering free clothes, my size is a medium. With niceties aside, I must ask, there is something interesting happening with your business venture with Mr. Grave. And I cannot help but wonder if any of your extracurricular abilities are being lent towards this business venture. I don't know why you would tell me any of this other than my hope that you have somewhere in you a nascent seed of curiosity and playfulness. If you respond in anything other than the affirmative with juicy details, I promise that when I die, I will haunt you for all eternity and it will be unpleasant. Yours faithfully, 
uh, Lady Mylin Caro. That was such a good letter. Thank you, Bria. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's next? I'll do one if that's okay. Please. Uh, I'd like to write a letter to Lady Mylin. <gasps> love it, love it. Wait, from who? From Felicity. Love it, okay. Dear Lady Caro, it's been a moment since we were able to converse in person, so I thought it better to put pen to paper to let you know how things have been going with me. I know you are quick to say I have an overactive imagination, and normally I would agree and say you know me too well, but please believe me when I say this time around, I have a bad feeling about something happening. A bad feeling about business dealings and visitors to the home. I don't know what business you might have with one Mr. Matthias Grave, but I beg you, please keep your wits about you. Please remain as on edge as you possibly can be in your dealings with this possibly nefarious individual. More to come as I discover it, but in the meantime, I want you to know I will not make the same mistakes I've made previously. I will make amends. I will prove myself. P.S. Please burn this letter after reading. Love, Felicity. Letter to burn next. Thank you. That was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I love the callback too. That was <laughs> to Rosalind. Amazing. <laughs> and now you're all burning it. And mm. I these are so mm. juicy. I love it. Oh my god. All Letter right. too juicy. Letter too juicy. Ooh, 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 ooh. Terry, Eric, give me. I'm gonna write a, a letter, letter to my Lynn. <gasps> okay. Um, my Lynn. She is my Lynn, <laughs> not yours. Mine. My violin. Uh... Oh, and this is from Eva. Uh huh. Okay. Dear violin, thank you for standing up for me and always encouraging me to speak my mind. I feel like we should be closer. Um, what's that face? <laughs> I am pondering what you mean by that. Okay. I feel As like I read. We, okay, great. I feel like we should be closer. Um, I consider you to be one of my bosom friends. Am I one of your bosom friends? Check yes or check no. I hope that I don't know. I I scratch out. Ah. I hope that we can come to some sort of understanding and continue to ride carriages together into the sunset, so to speak. I feel like I have a lot to learn from you. And if you give me a chance, I think you have a lot to learn from me too. With love, Eva. Ooh. I check maybe and send it back. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> gotta do it. You gotta do it. She made a it. whole new box. That's baby game. She That's made fourth a whole grade new game box. all day. <laughs> maybe. Eric. In a gel pen. <laughs> I'm just gonna say Ooh, she checked my scented. box. Oh. Mm. What did it what what does what does that gel pen smell like? Gel pens are the best. They're just one of the best pens. Which yeah. color gel pen? Uh, no, purple glitter the... smelled like grape. Grape. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right. Eric, you that got a game us? pen. Yeah. Uh, Reginald is going to write a letter 
uh, to the local constabulary. Uh, so <gasps> What's a constabulary? A, Sorry. Like the Five police. Out. Yeah. Of, uh, of Havishire. Oh my uh, God. To, he's a snitch. He's going <laughs> to, he's going to write a letter to probably there's uh, a constable or someone, yeah, no. someone he's known for a while in, in, uh, in the, the constable's office that he can send a letter to that he feels confident. Uh, we'll call this, this person, Oh, what if this is... Are you going to call uh, him Eric? <laughs> he's going to send a letter yeah. to uh, to Ernest Scrimshaw. <laughs> oh, shit. Look at one of us keeping track of the plot. Fuck. I tried to find that oh name my God, so amazing. hard. I wrote God. it down. And I could amazing. not. Ernest Scrimshaw. I love Scrimshaw. What a companion whip. Fuck. Whip. Whip. Gently or something. Yeah. Whip Chowderly. <laughs> Chowderly. Chowder. Because it was like cra- clam chowder. Yeah. I made clam chowder. Yeah. I made chowder. Ernest I made, Scrimshaw I made and Whip chowder Chowderly. on Sunday because of that name. <laughs> My name is Whip Gently. Whip Chowderly. <laughs> <laughs> chowderly. Yes, Chowderly. Yes, yes, yes. I know okay. my captions are saying shout early. It's Chowderly. <laughs> so. But... But it's just like the male version of ladies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he's writing a letter to uh, Ernest Scrimshaw, uh, tying it all together. It's, it's all the same universe. Uh, if you're following the canon. Oh, y- y- sense. Y- um, I mean, Eric, <laughs> yeah. maybe not, but yeah. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, this is an alternate universe, a parallel timeline. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair, fair. Uh, dear Mr. Scrimshaw, um, I believe we have had occasion to meet a few times, but uh, I am Reginald Gross. I am the master of the house at Eaton Abbey. And I write to you because recently uh, the family of my house has had business dealings with an individual uh, by the name of uh, Matthias Grave. Many know Matthias as an up-and-coming textile entrepreneur, but I know him as Matthias Grave, uh, the swindler and the scoundrel that once worked at Eaton Abbey before being disgraced. I write to you because I feel as though I can confidently say that he is a man who is up to no good. I do not know what he wishes to do to the people and the family of of Eaton Abbey or the greater Habershire area, but I assure you that none of it is good. I write to you so that perhaps you may look into his dealings and find what I'm sure are very nefarious things underneath. Yours dutifully, Reginald Gross. Love that, that's beautiful. All right, everybody still has one. You can write a letter, compel a letter. You also don't have to do two if you if you don't don't have uh, any ideas. Okay. Um, I feel like I want to compel a letter. Compel away, baby. Mm. From whomst? Whomst to whomst? Um, Let's we just say. had a scene, but I don't know what's happening, so I want to <clears throat> clarify. I want to know Felicity how you Is feel because you're listening to Christmas music. <laughs> <laughs> Are you making fun of my Christmas music right now? Yes, right now? I absolutely yes. am. It's very clear. A hundred percent. It's super like it's literally the, the thing is like Christmas music from another room. So it's like very calm. It's like smooth, jazzy, like Listen, silent night right now. And it is. There's nothing you can say to me. <laughs> that one make me stop judging you so carry no, on with the i have christmas <laughs> music in my rotation like on my spotify or on my pandora year round like i'm that person oh that's i love next space <sighs> i use i have okay so you have to understand my mom has a christmas tree in every room of the house including the bathrooms so she starts ah. decorating during thanksgiving meal like she literally was like started you know what i mean though like she will and like because anyway the bathrooms are gonna get it. I have a tree right next to me right now already. Like I in this room right now in the Prove office. It. Pick it up, bring it into frame. Don't Terry. Oh no. You called this bluff. You did this, Havana. 
It's a oh, tool. it's cute. You got it so quickly too. It was right there. <laughs> Oh, like I, it's right here. Oh my God. I have, Harry I have a, a Christmas debutante and she cannot be stopped. I and worked in production on the, on the Disney holiday Christmas special that was on this last week. I, I was one of the gift wrappers. You didn't see me because I was in production. I love, I work on, I, anyway, I'm a professional rapper, gift wrapper, and I love Christmas and I'm here for your needs. Um, if you need help with gifting ideas or packaging, let me know. Okay. So. Is your gift wrapper name Little Bow Wow? <laughs> Bria, please leave. Never I'm come I'm sorry. Back. You know, that's fair. <laughs> sorry, next. I usually do a Christmas in July party and I play the Judy Garland Christmas special from 1963. I want to recreate it one day because I'm obsessed with it. I want to do a live stage version of it and recreate it. We're never going to make this, this fucking story. No, you're not. I make a Judy Garland garland that I put around my house. That's what I make my first like two that. sentences. I do like that. Amazing. I'm sorry, Eric. What? I'm sorry. I can't hear you. Um, okay, fine. So, what's okay, so what am I doing? <laughs> am I writing a letter to? You said I'm going to compel a letter, and then you told us all that you were Santa Claus. I just, <laughs> you just made you made fun of me about Christmas. I just letting you I know didn't. that it's deep in my heart. Okay. I didn't make fun of you. I judged you deeply and unforgivingly. I wanted next to write a letter as Felicity to Finnegan because I want to know their status of their relationship. I want to know I like what's, that. what's yeah. the deal, yo. Cause we had a scene, but we didn't really didn't get to like interact. Yeah. Like that. A note between classes kind of energy. I like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Expend a resolve token, Terry and uh, Done, Finnegan will did. gain one Negs. Also Finnegan's my brother's name. So this is kind of funny. <laughs> nice. That's funny. I used to nanny a kid named Finnegan. He was very- Was funny. it my brother? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Was it though? Was it though? Yo, yo, Maybe. was it though? Dude, if you were my nanny. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Oh my God. We will have stories right now. Practically perfect in every way. What's that? <laughs> What's that? Uh <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> she was such a naughty nanny. All right. I'm oh done. yeah. Thanks, please. I have a question. <laughs> I don't know if I need to spend a resolve token on this or not. Um can can we say that Finnegan was pestering her to write him a note or something? Like he's been trying to spend some time with her and she's always too busy and always too busy. And uh, he's like, well, you know, if, if you don't have time for me in person, the le you know, you could do something. You could, you know, he's, he's this, trying to spend time with her. Is this because she's actually busy or because she's disinterested? she's actually busy okay i like that if yeah. you want to give uh if you want to give finnegan his resolve token back i just i just <laughs> i think she would write the note but not of her own accord like i, I want to make sure it's clear that like he kind of right has that's an her obstruction into... of her duties and she's trying to yeah know. yeah she's out in the forest hanging out with animals all day she doesn't have time to write letters yeah. Like you want me to walk all the way back to the house and find a pen and paper? <laughs> <laughs> Am I using a resolve token then? Y'all are just keeping your same resolve tokens because you just swapped them. So, well, I didn't get a resolve token from anyone though. It's Felicity. You, you got one. Oh, wait, what? No, Terry was using a resolve token to force you to write a letter, and then, and then you were yeah. get you you were spending uh, that got one it, got to. It, got it. Okay, so you just passed it back and forth. Cool, cool, it's like cool. the service industry. You just keep giving mm -hmm. money. That same tip. It's yeah. that same twenty dollars. <laughs> twenty dollars. I took yeah. Or Twitch my streaming. friends, we Venmo yeah. each other like twenty bucks back and forth That's constantly, true, true. and yeah. I'm just like, it's the same twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. So this is not a formal letter and it's written on something that you can tell is like a piece of paper that's been ripped off because it was also being used for something else, maybe like a shopping list or, or something practical. And it just says, Finnegan, I suppose if you won't leave me alone until I write you, here you go. Here's your note. I don't know what kind of free time you think I have or how you want me to spend it but I am committed to my job and my duties here and I hope to see you come to support that I hope to see quite a bit of you truth be told but not when you are 
being so bloody annoying pestering me like this all the time. Just please relax. I appreciate you. I enjoy our time together. I would enjoy it more if you didn't keep asking for it constantly. Naff off kindly. Love, Felicity. Naff? She's saying yeah, I don't, I don't to know if they would have said down. that back then. What's, no, I don't even know what naff is in current terms. It's, it's like a nicer way of saying piss off. I love that. <laughs> naff off kindly. That was beautiful, Nugs. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> Naff off. All right, y'all. That's great. Who else has got one here? I've got to calm down, is what she's saying. Uh, I've got All a right. quick note on deck for Matthias Grave as uh, Amelie Warwick. Okay. Uh, a note? Or yeah, a it's just a little... No, it's just a little note that she, like... Uh, I don't know how she got this to him. Uh, she probably, like, secreted to him as he was leaving uh, from the very fancy money dinner. Or she went to like, uh, how much like she went to go refill his wine and then like accidentally knocked his napkin off. Yeah, hundo Give him a new one and like the the note was like tucked inside the napkin. She's so smooth, heck yeah. So he's, it's the sort of wrapping up of dinner and he's, mm. uh, he shakes out the napkin to put it back on his lap and this note falls out and it says, uh, Mr. Grave, uh, it seems as though you were once one of us and have found yourself in other circumstances. I promise I don't hold that against you. Just know that you have the support of all of downstairs. We're rooting for you. And if you ever need anything, look for me specifically, Amelie Warwick. <laughs> the girl all. has a death wish. I think you need to explain the resolve. Spy! You're doing a bad job. Yeah. <laughs> I think you need to expend a resolve token because um, this is like going to put him in awares that his history with the house is known. Yeah, I'm dumb. Whoops. <laughs> so I'm going to give him a resolve token and you have to lose one for Amelie. Mine are all gone. Uh, well, now they are. They weren't before. <laughs> Um, okay, I've found this is important. I found Ernest Scrimshaw. Ooh, right? look at him. Hell yeah. Yeah. Did we see Into that it. coming? Did we see that coming? And Into then it. No. Whip Chowderly. Yeah. Does she look like a cat? Doesn't she look like a little detective? Totally. Little detective. She's, She's got, got like young watching the detectives. She's so She's cute. She's so cute. I know She's that got young friends. murder she wrote <laughs> vibes and I'm here for it. She's it's just shy and retiring. How old are I you, ma'am? <laughs> Maybe retiring means something else. <laughs> it does. It does. What's it mean? <laughs> You're muted. Oh you look complaining. I'm eating my sandwich. Oh, Terry, tell me. Retiring is like pulling back. Like she's a little more shy, like more oh, like reserved. Oh, like reserved. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Reticent. Mm -hmm. I like that for Whip Chowderly. Mm -hmm. Aw. Okay, sorry. Um, who? Anybody else have a letter? Good? Goods to go? Um, okay, I love all of this. We're now going to move into uh, the action phase again, which I'm... Uh, I am turning the rooftop phase from sense sensibilities and swordsmanship into action phase because it just makes a little more sense for what we're doing. But if you want to reference, if you get the book, that's what it is. Um, so we're going to turn into that. So this is this is much like the novel chapter. We're focusing on action. Uh, and I think uh, now is the time that we need to see some serious action from Matthias, like especially because he has direct information now that they know they know his history with the house. And I think the cover he was trying to keep, he, he probably doesn't know for a fact, but he has a strong feeling and perhaps like a paranoia that he's find out he, he that he has been found out and that perhaps that needs to advance his plans a bit faster. So what is he gonna do? But you play Matthias. You have to <laughs> No, this is this is part this is part of the 
It's this game is entirely collaborative storytelling, Abria. You don't get to I don't do like that. Collaboration. <laughs> You're a fool. That's a lie. What? <laughs> My God, y'all liked it until this episode. I swear to God. <laughs> no, we do like it. We still like it. Tell me then, what's Matthias do? <clears throat> so if he has to accelerate his timeline, his ultimate goal is uh, to to get his revenge, basically, on yeah. the upper echelon, and specifically that sense of resent revenge was brought on by his treatment at Eaton Abbey. So if like he he doesn't have the time to get it through these sort of like societal means or these economical means, like yeah. maybe he'll just take it. Yeah, like or how yeah. does he go about that? I'm Bitches. Not... <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> I want him to exploit that little dumb dumb Amelie and sneak okay. into like below house. Have her mm. have her like leave a door unlocked so he can like infiltrate with his zombos. That okay. sounds like the smartest way to go for sure. Is, um, d- does she think that she's helping though? Like she doesn't think she's assisting in him doing something bad. She thinks this is a smart move. She thinks he's gonna come visit her because he's in love with her because they've made eye contact twice, and Got she it. has yeah. already previous she has previously stated that that's she thinks that's all it takes. She, so she thinks this is a honeypot. Yeah. He's like, he, he's going to come over and spill all his secrets and then we're going to get him. A hundred percent. I'm no. very good at this. Okay. But he's bringing zombies. He's bringing what? Zombie. <laughs> zombies. Zombie. Zombie. I didn't hear that part. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> um, okay. Then I think I want to retcon the epistolary phase a little bit then and, and have a response from uh from uh matthias i'm wondering how he gets that to amelie he can just write a letter like maybe i don't he, do you think if he wrote a letter to the house that was addressed to one of the servants that would be chill i do not think so no you're right yeah mm, uh the only thing that i can think that he could do is if they were planning to host him for dinner again if he were making a request of something that he wants served at at like a, another celebratory meal that they're going to do, that he sends something that he says is, uh, you know, like a family recipe, a, a secret family recipe, mm. who, you know, we that don't has brains share in it. eyes or- with anyone who's not going to actually be preparing the meal. It's for the servants kind of thing. Like Ooh, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Eric? Oh, I was just going to say, what if like part of, Amelie's duties is shopping. Yeah. And he can catch her in town. Yeah, I'm in town. Mm, I like the com- I like the combination of these things. Yeah. Um cuz I really like the creepiness of him catching her in town while she's shopping and doing that but then being like, "Hey, this is uh this is a family recipe at next time I visit. I would love for you to cook this." And so she doesn't even open it until she gets like back to the house. But she doesn't think it's like anything other than that. Uh, and then she's like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's I like that. In my bag let's, of infinite potatoes. Let's double creepy. Let's he doesn't potatoes. he doesn't leave it to, like he doesn't give it to her. He he leaves it at like the shop, like the butcher or wherever, like the, the, the grocer or something like that to give to her or something like that. Like, 100%. Oh my creepy. God. He because he used to work there. Yeah. He knows the schedule. He knows yeah. like he used to be the shopper. That's where how he like Grifted or not grifted, skimmed money off the top. Y'all are so smart. See, all I had to do was call you bitches. Uh, <laughs> I like it when you call me that. <laughs> yeah. It felt good. I love this. Uh, okay, so it's like <laughs> she rocks she rocks up to the shop to the shopping. The shopkeeper says, anybody? Oh, yes. Mm. What do you need? Oh, shopkeeper what? Yes. What kind of meat can I get for you? We okay. So shh, please don't tell anyone. Um, because we're not supposed to be eating meat, but I just want a little bit for the family. Uh, for downstairs. So uh, your biggest well, cheapest downstairs, cut. Downstairs, you think they'd actually? No, okay we're not allowed bill. to eat. What? Huh? What? We're, there's a budget for us too. They we we don't. Yeah. 
excuse but me. When they check the books, I have to put the right thing in the books, you know? Yeah, it's, we have a food budget. I'm sorry, you're asking a lot of questions. Right, but all, they said how, that it's supposed to be vegetarian, right? Yeah, they're vegetarian. And you just, well, do you want our custom or not? And the I butcher can just is, go buy the, more fucking potatoes. The well, butcher is, this whole house is supposed to be vegetarian, but I have this letter for you. Why do you have a letter for me? You won't give me meat, but you have a fucking letter for me. Well, this <laughs> man came by and said this I'm letter sorry. for you. Are you in love with me, sir? Well, maybe a little bit. Ridiculous. Give me the fucking Good. letter. And go quite, get some meat from the back. You're quite fit. All right. I I'll am get, fit. It's I'll from lugging all of these fucking produce pieces. Jesus I'll get you, Christ. I'll get you a cut of something. Thank you. This escalated. I'll cut me meat. She winks badly. Oh, good. <laughs> Disgusting. You know what? No. Now no, I'm a vegetarian. Now I'm a vegetarian. You did that. And then I walk out. You want my letter. sausage? <laughs> Ew. Uh, scene. No, I'm sorry. I regret it. I regret it. I regret it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, and so she gets it's vegetarian, home. I swear. <laughs> she, oh my. It's just more potatoes. Jesus Christ, it Terry. It's like You're... 10 potatoes. <laughs> it's 10 potatoes in a case. She day. gets back to Eaton Abbey and, yeah. and she's unloading the kitchen uh, she's unloading the groceries in the kitchen uh, and she pulls the note out of her pocket uh, and that's the moment that she realizes it's uh, it's from uh, Matthias and on the front it says uh, secret family recipe for the chef's eyes only Amelie uh, what's her last name? Warwick Amelie Warwick I am not a chef. I should probably go take it to the, oh, wait, an intrigue. <laughs> then I open it after uh, almost it handing says, it off to the chef. Uh, and it says, dear Amelie, I was so taken by your note. What a sweet, what a sweet thing to do. I've never received such a, um, a kind and charming uh, sort of um, uh, fancy in the midst of such an otherwise boring meal. Uh, so thank you for that respite. You are quite the breath of fresh air amongst all this civility, as it were. I was hoping, perhaps in two days' time, that I could come visit you in the night. If you agree, please meet me at the back kitchen door at precisely midnight. And I will show you just how grateful I am for your kindness. Signed, Matthias, blah, blah, blah. Grave. Yep. Grave. Matthias Grave. This dude a vampire too? I think this dude's a vampire. <laughs> I read a book once. In the once dark of the night, he will find her. That's really forward for Mr. Grave, but I'm a very good spy and I'm going to go get all of the intel and prove my sister, to, to prove to my sister Felicity that I could also contribute to this house. And Love she like it. folds it up and shoves it in her dress and just like goes off and drops off potatoes. Love it. <laughs> and it smells like him too. It smells like honeysuckle and pine. Cedar. Cedar. Sorry. <sighs> Oh God, Ibria. I think you like Matthias. Um, it smells so good. That's so a with good that, smell. With, with that retcon in the epistolary phase, I think we jump back into the action phase and we are at that night, right? And it is it is midnight. And, uh, and I presume uh, she's waiting by the door. Yeah. Um, she's not right by the door. She's inside a little bit looking stealthy and intriguing in the corner is anyone with her no no i'm a one woman operation does anyone want to spend a resolve token? because this bitch ain't sneaky <laughs> <laughs> older sister right here she's been muttering uh, about this under her breath token, <laughs> uh give that resolve token uh to an um, amelie uh Go ahead. I don't it. want her to know that I'm there, though. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if she's sort of hanging around near the door trying to be sneaky, where do we find uh, where do we find Felicity? 
I think is so the door that we're by is this in the area that's very like very much the kitchens. Yeah, I think that I think the same it's the same room is the kitchen as where they kind of put together the table for the servants to eat. And then there's like a back door. And it's the very lowest part of the house that goes sort of goes back out onto the background. I think Felicity is hiding uh, behind like in, in Eric's background, how they have that island in the center. Um, she's kind of hiding <laughs> behind that. And maybe there are like, if if it's either not see-through or there are like little crates and boxes and stuff of different foods, you know, enough to obscure the fact that she's crouched. Mm-hmm. And she she thinks she's just going to hear, you know, her sister meeting up with... Uh, you know, another staff member that she has a crush on or something maybe, but she's just wanting to stay by in case something goes wrong with her sister. Okay. Amelie's just at the table. Like she keeps changing chairs and like changing poses. Like I honestly love her. All of us when we were young and thought we were cute. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Thought we were hot shit. I love it. Um, So uh, there's a very, very quiet rap at the door. Oh God! <coughs> I mean, come in, come in, come in. I'll get it. <laughs> she runs over and grabs it. Uh, and you open the door, and uh, Matthias Grave is uh, standing there in all his very good posture, energy, <laughs> and uh, and he looks at you and he smiles, and his eyes sort of glint in the candlelight of the dark room, and he goes, uh, "Amelie, it is." So nice to meet you properly. Oh, uh, it is very nice to meet you. T- is it hot in here? Jeez. Um, <clears throat> uh, hello, Mr. Grave. Oh, and he mean? uh he extends his hand uh to Amelie expectantly. Oh, she goes and does the the wrong thing first and goes to like grab his hand and then remembers at the last second and flips. Mm-hmm. Like oh. and uh he very slowly uh, and gently kisses it and goes, it is such a pleasure. Thank you for uh, making yourself known to me during that dinner. You've done me a great service. I, uh, how so, Mr. Grave? Go go on, I would like to hear more. Yes, as I said, you pulled me out of my very tired reprieve from that dinner I was a part of and had my mind wandering in all sorts of ways. Oh, um, good, good. <laughs> what is it exactly that you do here, Amelie? I am a lady's maid. She's lying. I know she's a housemaid. I just want to say yeah. that up top. I know okay. she is. I don't I'm know a, the difference. <laughs> I'm the lady's maid. Uh, lady's maid is much nicer. Okay. Like the top two other than like head butler is like val- uh, the valet and lady's maid. Okay. Um, the lady's maid to, <clears throat> to the dowager eating herself. <clears throat> and how do you find that work? Um, do you I- feel stepped on? Honestly, do you yes. feel over bad? It's so much all the time. And then they reward us with like a glass of disgusting alcohol and think that we should be grateful. Yeah. And only once every six months. Yeah. And at this point he puts his hands on his shoulder and he's his like red, his eyes are getting like more red as uh, as he sort of moves into the candlelight uh, and he goes, are you tired of feeling invisible when you enter the room? As if you're not being acknowledged as a person. Uh-huh. You're tired of that, aren't you? I, I am, Mr. Gray. Uh, and he'll go to move like a lock of hair out of her face. Uh, and then it's just like, I was tired of it too. What did you, what did you, how, how did you get out? 
Well, I was forced out, but sometimes we're put in extreme situations that make us see what needs to be done. What? So what needs to be done then? So what needs to be done is that we need to take our place. We need to have our time in the sun. We need to stop being treated like cattle and start being treated like potatoes no not not like potatoes not like potatoes no like, like people like gods <clears throat> oh. isn't that what you want for yourself Amelie um when you put it like that I do don't you see, want to see them all suffer and yourself sitting on top? Not where they were, but above where they were. A station you've never imagined. Yeah. I'm here to offer that to you. And anyone else you want to bring along for the ride. Can my sister come too? Do you think she has a similar interest as you? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I'm going to spend a resolve token for Matthias to know that Felicity's there. <gasps> Dunk! Dunk! Well, maybe if she... Is that okay, Next. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> um... Well, maybe if she came out from behind the food bins, she could tell us herself. Is that a euphemism, Mr. Graves? No, it's it's literal, Amelie. And he'll turn, he'll break his gaze with Amelie and look over to the, the sort of, what was it, like fruit boxes you were behind or something? And just sort of uh, his, his red eyes glint over at you, Felicity. Felicity stands up. And she she puts her hands like authoritatively on the kitchen island and then starts to walk toward him. Uh, Sissy. <laughs> and she's she's talking while she does it. But while she's talking at him, she's going to grab a knife from off of the kitchen island and just kind of like slide that off, put it down by her side and keep talking and, and hope that her uh, speech is distracting him enough from the fact that sure. before she made her way over, she uh -huh. uh, has that at her and she's going to say, I would take my hands off of my sister if I were you, please, sir. He'll, he'll release her without putting up a fight. You do know she's just a child, don't you? I am an adult, probably. <laughs> I don't know how old no. I am. You are not an adult. You are my little sister. I am 16 going. <laughs> yeah! 17, I know that I'm naive. Oh, that's a reference that you get. <laughs> if it's a musical, it's yeah. Musicals, okay, yes. Musicals, yes. Mm -hmm. I was 16 I think I could have been married like 10 years ago that's actually true <laughs> wait no I did not register that a second half of that sentence I thought you were going to be like I could be married right now and you just said 10 years ago <laughs> child bride no no but I think it wasn't uncommon for them to be married at 15 16 17 yeah correct I'm a woman and you need to let me have this to see we will have that discussion later. For now, you have <sighs> snuck out at night and let someone in to our no, quarters. Not just someone, because Felicity. I'm, a, I'm doing the thing we talked about at dinner. I Why? know you remember me. I know nothing goes unshared down here for longer than a couple of seconds. So, so if I... your if your eyes had forgotten my face, I think they remember now. Why are you here? You overheard our conversation. You know exactly why I'm here. No, I know the 
flowery prose you spewed at my sister to sway her to your side. I'm asking what you intend to actually do here. With me, or oh, just in general, sorry. <laughs> he'll uh, he'll take a step towards Felicity and say, you wound me, ma'am. I am here to liberate you. And how do you plan to do so? I will help you take this house for your own. And how do you plan to do so? She asked a second time, still waiting for a direct answer. He'll take a step really close this time. Uh, and excuse me, she doesn't need liberating. She has Finnegan. And he'll whisper, do you really want to know? Yes. Uh, and then he'll turn, or no, he'll stay where he is and he'll, uh, he'll snap his fingers and then go, Horatia. Uh, and I'll, I'll, use a, uh, I'll use one of Matthias's resolve tokens to be like, um, Horatio enters followed by sort of a line of bumbling corpses. Uh, and Eric, if you want to describe Horatio's entrance. Uh, Horatio is sort of like, it's kind of like leading not very well-trained dogs. And it's just kind of like, he, he like enters in sort of um, somewhat apologetic, but like, this is like, sorry, this is my job kind of thing. It's, it's like, uh, evening ladies. Um, I, uh, you remember my dear friend Horatia. That's that's not the part I'm confused about. Sissy, uh -huh. one of them has their arms off, I not like I'm... in the like, but like I can see the bone. I know, Amelie. Um, yeah. get behind not me. as sturdy as I would hope. Oh, well, what can you expect from the dead? Mm. Amelie, get behind me quickly. Yeah. I'm coming. I'm already there. Oh, God. And Felicity uh, does, like, the mom arm, her arms out to protect, because, you know, her arm's going to do a lot of good here. Uh, Amelie, like, grabs on to, like, the back of her shirt and goes, I'm a very bad spy. Uh, and I think, I think what Eric said is accurate. Like, poorly trained, like, dogs that are half asleep or something. You know, they're they're sort of, like, bumbling around, and then every every now and then they sort of snap out of their like fervor and uh and like gnash and and it's like the languid movements suddenly become like erratic and unpredictable and and violent uh and then horatio will sort of like it's i don't know you describe it eric like what does that look for when he's like because i think it's a mix of the magic between matthias and horatio yeah. where it's like it's a communication but also a control yeah it's more like like Chris Pat from Jurassic World, but not as competent. <laughs> it's more like no, 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 <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. Uh, and then for you, usually in time with Horatio doing that, you can see Matthias uh, sort of uh, making strange gestures with his hands, and this red sort of spark and flow of energy that pops off it and comes back into it and works around it. And then uh, when it seems resolved, he'll put his hands back down. Abria, are you can holding? Yeah. yeah. Can I spend a resolve token uh, as uh, Lady uh, Mylin to step out of the shadows that I was hiding in with my illusion magic? fucking lutely Where was she <laughs> hiding at? Uh, it's just dark. So she, she just stepped into a shadow and was able to disappear entirely within it. And she kind of steps from that shadow into like a beam of moonlight and reveals yeah. herself and snaps and goes, oh, they're dead. That's what it is. Oh, Shannon's going to love this. And she's going to turn and try to sprint out in a way to go upstairs to let upstairs know. Uh, and she specifically said Shannon. Yeah, her friend um, who wants he interesting would know, things to happen. He would know that's the Eatons. So I think we're going to enter into our first uh, situation of... Uh, da -da 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 -da. These, this is called Daring Deed in the Sense and Sensibility and Swordship. Uh, but what's going to happen is we're going 
to both say, and anybody else can enter into, uh, say what, um, uh, oh, <laughs> say what, um, they want the outcome to be, um, uh, uh, and, uh, and then we can, and then we can bid with our resolve tokens on who wins. Dope. Uh, so what do you want the ultimate outcome to be here, Bria? Uh, she wants to get upstairs and alert the house with a, with a, like just a shout that okay. there's dead people downstairs, but I have no resolve tokens with which to bid. So, okay. This you is see dope. dead people. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh, then I, uh, then I, as Matthias, uh, want this situation to be that you don't do that. Uh, <laughs> does anyone else's character want to get in on the bidding for this daring deed? Uh, that wants to, cause the bidding now is starting at one resolve token. Uh, and I'm winning cause Bria has zero. <laughs> I also don't have any resolve tokens, so I honestly can't help at the moment. And you I mean, don't have to be in the scene. It could be like your character yeah. would want a different resolution. Right. Yeah. I don't have any resolve. resolve tokens for my character. Regin Reginald has two resolve tokens and he would want to inform the family. <laughs> okay. Uh, does anyone else want to throw in a resolve token for... Yeah, I'll jump has... in. Can I, can I add to Reginald's bid with Amelie's um, last resolve token? Yeah. Sweet. That's Reginald three. was right. I hate this. <laughs> this is three? Yeah. And Matthias only has two. So uh, those three resolve tokens are expended. Uh, they're discarded. Uh, and y'all win the daring deed off. Uh, and so that, that comes deed. to fruition. Dun, dirt, uh, and so describe to us how this happens, Abria. Uh as she takes off, uh, I don't think she actually canceled the spell effect. So what you guys see is while she's in the moonlight, you see Mylin, and every time she leaves it and goes back in the shadow, she completely disappears. So you get this on again, off again of her like running upstairs. And the longer she's running and the longer the spell is up, you kind of see that like famous of her sort of come. She gets a little like vulpine looking and her ears go a little bit to points and her eyes seem to reflect a little bit of the moonlight as she gets all the way upstairs and then just begins to shout the moment she hits that like super echoey foyer of just get up. There's dead people attacking the house. Horatio did it and Matthias is helping. Oh God, really threw <laughs> Horatio under the bus. <laughs> But she's, the thing is, she's not, like, she's giggling as much as I am. Like, she thinks this is hilarious and worthy of note, but is, doesn't seem scared. She's just excited. Okay. Uh, okay. And then I think that rouses the, I think that's enough to rouse the rest of the house uh, up and downstairs, because this is the dead of night, midnight. There's not a sound going on. No one has their TV on. Those aren't invented yet, <laughs> you know? So it's like, if something like that, is cutting the air and we can almost assume that with her magic like maybe it's amplified in a certain way or uh reaching ears more than it normally would um you and i think the turgies, if you yeah. will yeah and nice. uh if if we can say like um like uh reginald comes into the like bursts into the room since he's already downstairs is that okay eric yeah uh and then matthias is getting like all wild-eyed and he's looking around uh, at all. And I think the rest of the downstairs people are, um, have all gathered, they've all burst out of their quarters and, uh, and they're in that like main room, uh, with the back door open and zombies pouring in. And, uh, Matthias just looks wild eyed at all of them. And it's like, now is the time to take things for yourself. You can join me, but if you don't join me, you're against me. And I will treat you just as I treat that rich and gifted and uplifted family that runs this house. Matthias, you are a snake and I will not let you hurt my family. Okay, so a no from Reginald. <laughs> What's Felicity say? Uh, 
Felicity desperately, desperately wants to cling to her job and prove that she's good at protecting this household. So, okay. heck no, is she going to let someone have zombies overrun it? Uh uh-uh, uh, that would be chaos. She might not have a job after. <laughs> okay, uh, Amelie and Finnegan. Um, well, Sissy, he makes a lot of good points. Is that it? Is that uh, a yes? I don't know. I don't want to get in trouble with my sister. <laughs> Join me, Amelie. You could be, you are, you, and you could be above all of this. Um, no more scrubbing the toilets. No more bringing them food. Mm-hmm. No more dressing and undressing them. Yes, because that's live, a thing I definitely did. You could live your own life. Uh, okay, be your could, own person. Last, just one quick follow-up question. Um, when you, Why you does he think you were dressing and undressing is what I want to know. What? Oh, Finnegan, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Pass off. The, the you class is tell him you were, you were ladies maid. Oh my God, shut up. What are you doing? Don't you have like a foot to sniff or something? Listen, well, I know I'm, it's, I know I'm it's a all very footman. heated down here. It's very heated down here, but please do not state <laughs> That you are a lady's maid when you were still a housemaid. There are rules to all of this. Right, there's some se- sense of decorum. More zombies are filing into the downstairs basement and starting to uh, tumble their way upstairs. You know what? Why Actually, does it sound you like suck. somebody I'm joining the bed, guys? <laughs> Yay! We love to see it. All right, Finnegan, what's up? I was just asking whatever. What happened to Amelie? She, right. Whatever, whatever Felicity wants. I Mr. Want Grave do. loves me. So I'm going to help him kill everyone with zombies. He doesn't that. even know what you <laughs> he do. He looked at me twice and he is desperately in love with me. And I will, Matthias so we can Grave be together. But did he check no yes or did he himself. check no? Or did he check maybe? I didn't have to check. I just know. You know who checked maybe was Felicity. So maybe... You should join me, Finnegan. Sorry, how, how do you know that? Lies and slander. Lies and slander. <laughs> he wrote me and just said just to not be as, like, needy, I guess. Wait, who wrote the maybe? <laughs> no, that was me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> she didn't write maybe. She wrote, like, don't be needy. <laughs> don't be as worse. Needy. It's kind of a maybe. It's a different kind of maybe. <laughs> Oh. Maybe I'm going to break up with you. <laughs> Pretty good, my boy. If there's something I've learned in my years is that women like decisive action. So please join me in throwing out this revel from the kitchen. All right. I'd like to see you try. Yeah, and I'd think- like to see you try. And I want, to grab, I want Emily to try to grab his hand. And he's like, no. <laughs> he's like, I don't like you like that. And instead, he he raises his hands up and uh, where his pupils were red before, his entire eyes uh, glow red. uh, And there's this red energy that is crackling off his hands again as the zombies pouring into the door uh, start doing so with such a veracity that they're getting like stuck on each other. And when they can't force uh, through the door, they start ripping each other apart to try and uh, make room for them to enter the house and they start pouring uh, and pouring into the servants' quarters and the kitchen and headed to their way upstairs. Um, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to do another daring deed phase. Uh, and y'all are going to tell me, or if if a couple people have, I think we should do one of each. So I think Matthias really wants everyone to die, I guess, except Amelie and Horatio. Wants everybody to be killed by the zombies. That's what he wants to happen. Uh, so we need an opposing viewpoint from the people who are like on the side of the house. What what is the ultimate goal, you think? Kill all zombies. Push them out of the kitchen and lock no, the no, doors. No, no, no. Like a vague goal. Yeah. Like what? What? Like if this was the end of the movie, what would you want to happen? What Get would out that of here like? alive. I mean, like re- uh, re-dead the undead. Yeah. Re-dead the undead. Okay, kill the zombies. Uh, and- like for everyone. Or just 
personal. I mean, y'all should have a common goal. Yeah. And it should be like big and yeah, like the end of a movie. Yeah. Stop the zombies and Matthias. Horatio okay. is fun. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give Horatio uh, a pass, but that yeah, he seems pretty cool. I, I, for some reason, picture Horatio as a similar energy as uh, in what we do in the shadows. I forget his name. He's Guillermo. Guillermo. Guillermo the reluctant, oh, my like, friend assistant. Harvey. I definitely picture him <laughs> in that sort of role. He's um, so who knows what will happen great. in the course of this. Uh, but those are, let's say those are our two end games. All right. And everybody has their individual inputs into that. But we need to now bid on how it's actually going to end. Um, and I believe... Since that last one affected me, I, as Matthias, have three resolve tokens. Uh, so I'm going to start the bidding at three resolve tokens that I kill everyone in the house except Amelie and Horatio. <laughs> Too rich for my blood. Y'all can literally pool, nothing. You can pool your resources together. Oh, hold on. I have some as Finnegan. I have, I have two resolves. I have two okay. resolves as Finnegan. You want to throw both those in? Yep. Take okay. Can I spend Shannon's that she's old and doesn't want to die? <laughs> Yeah. Does Ooh. she want to die though? Oh, wait. Just can she spend just one because she's honestly 50 50? Like, yeah. She was like, at least it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I don't want to so die probably. Three to three. You have to get one more to beat me in the bidding. I have two as Felicity. And you want to spend both of them? You only have to spend one to win. <laughs> I don't know. Can I throw in my facilitator points? Oh, I've got two facilitator points. I'm going to say I can. I don't know the rules. I'm up to five. All right. So we're five to five if Neg throws both of hers in. Okay. Okay. What about, what about <laughs> the question? Are they only Everyone coming? dies. Everyone yeah. dies. No, no, no. Hold on. Good question. What about our secondary characters that we play? Yep. Yeah, dude. Lisa has two more, and she definitely would not want. Nope. Huh? Annalisa. 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 Okay. So y'all are up to seven. There we go. Well, and I've got get all that resolve in the but game. What, what about Amelie? Amelie's been out. All of my characters have been tapped out. Oh, come on. What's the point of having you on my side? Yeah. Uh, Horatio <laughs> has one left. And it's, where side. where does he spend it? I mean, he would spend it with uh, with Matthias. Okay, so we're six to seven right now. Anybody else want everyone to die? <laughs> He'll spend one more. I'll death? spend the other. From Shannon to give to you. I don't know. I don't have anything. What happens use. if we tie? I, I, we should tie. Let's not oh. die. Because <laughs> I don't know. Oh, okay. Just checking. I think ultimately I get to decide if it's a tie. So don't put me in that position. <laughs> Next, don't do that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not She a about to. Look at her. Look no, with that face. She's in the vote. That was in her face. So I was thinking about something totally unrelated. Lies. Is the bidding done? Oh my God, but your face is still thinking so hard. Six I love it. Six to seven. Six to seven right now. Wait, Horatio's, who's winning? Or, uh, her, I said Horatio. Matthias has six and the house has seven. What is happening? LOL. <laughs> Terry. <laughs> I wasn't asking. I was asking. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I bet, I bet Jingle chat. Bells is happening right now is what I meant. It's not. It's, <laughs> it's Sugar Plum. Dance with the Sugar Plums, not cracker that's actually perfect it is <laughs> all right if the bidding is over everyone done next you still look like you're considering something yeah, well, that's what i was that's what i was I asking it was I her know. face because i want to know what the hell's going on that's well, i should have just done a private chat to negs for that because that's what i wanted to know what's happening lol her face is like you know how you could find oh, out story. spend a goddamn monologue to monologue token. you know what i don't have any no, so you can't if you want to spend one if you, you can't spend, spend, a spend token it on, on literally nega or spend it on negs. I want to know what negs is thinking. Do it. I can tell Do you. It. I can just Eat tell the you. Rich. Okay. Eat the rich. Okay. Here's what Eat I was thinking. The rich. Here's what I was thinking, y'all. I was thinking how at her core, Felicity, if we're getting into the nitty gritty, if we're gonna mm. take this apart word by word, mm. her desire is to make amends for her errors and retain her position. Mm. Now, notice the phrasing there. It doesn't say retain your position serving the exact same household. It says retain your position. So if there were to be a shift in leadership, but she was guaranteed a job, yeah, dude. that would still meet her ultimate desire. However, the look you were seeing on my face was me thinking, 
uh, that you should never trust whenever somebody's coming in to overthrow a current regime, you should never trust them when they say that you'll be able to maintain your role or your status once they take over because they never end up doing that. They never honor it. They always kill you. Always. Matthias wouldn't do that. He comes, he comes from literally exactly where you are. No. He literally was in your shoes. Y'all knew each other. Yo, just make a stipulate, like a safety clause for my land and I'm very into this. All right. Keep me alive. <laughs> How is, is Also, it your possible? sister is on his side. Yeah, That's dude. That's true. That's true. Hey, girl, hey, we could be here. We're in love. Peace be part of our family. I think Felicity, well, her gut instinct, she assumed that her sister would be on her side. Like, she just naturally assumed that you know when it came down to it her sister would kind of see the error of her ways and upon seeing her sister not budging and kind of like seeing where the chips are falling she's doing all of those mental calculations uh and i think she's going to take a step forward towards matthias and she's going to say if i don't stand in your way and if I do not impede your hostile takeover, will you guarantee me a place, this status or higher in your service when a, a new regime begins? Uh, Matthias will take a step towards you. Uh, and very gently, like, put a finger under your chin and be like, from the dirt, I will give you the world, I promise. Eat the rich. She said, eat the rich, let's go. Okay, <laughs> so our Felicity's resolve tokens going over to, oh yeah. my God, yeah. so no. what is that? Yeah. <laughs> Is that five to eight now? Yeah. Is that what that is? Yeah. Yay, Sissy. <laughs> five to eight. I love it. Okay. So what that means in this daring deed level is uh, we've, if anybody else wants to throw in, is there any other resolve tokens to throw around? Not for the Not voting. A... Nope. Okay. Then that means the end of the story is that everyone dies except who's on the side of Matthias. So... Throughout the rest of this action phase, we're going to go, uh, we're going to take turns. Oh my God, there's a poll in chat. Everyone in <laughs> chat vote. Chat, eat the rich is winning. So <laughs> you made the, the right call, Nix. You made the right call. <laughs> That's I fantastic. Like that oh my God, I love this. This really was a back and forth. But we're going to go around, uh, we're going to take turns. And uh, it, it'll 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 vary. It'll take like one to three rounds of us each taking a turn, but we're going to describe the action as it happens. But we're all working above game for the end goal of everyone dies except Matthias and the people working with him. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. So I will start since I'm the I'm the lead of this, and I think as you say that, Felicity, there's like a new resolve in his face, and he looks back at Reginald in this bitter way, uh, and he lets out a, a, an evil laugh. <laughs> and then he, he starts trouncing up the stairs with all of these zombies uh, in tow that are, are jerking and shaking and then languidly dragging their feet and then coming out of their reverie and snapping and snapping. And um, I imagine that Horatio is in tow in some way or another, uh, sort of keeping, maybe bringing up the rear, <laughs> trying to <laughs> trying to herd uh, the cats um, yeah. as they go into like the main foyer uh, of the front room. And he calls out, um, Matthias call calls out and says, Eaton's Saratoga's come here and let me take what is mine. Bring back the dignity to myself that you stole from me so long ago. Are you talking about books? Okay, so it's oh. Eva's turn. Eva. <laughs> so Eva, it's your turn. You describe your round in the action. Yeah, so it's you're talking about books, right? Is this still? I don't understand. So are you just a terrible chef or are your eyes red for another reason? Are you cooking inside? 
Uh, and all these, you see these zombies like tumbling out from behind Matthias from the upstairs quarters. And they're starting to tumble up these, uh, the sort of like uh, half circle staircase that Are leads up to your bedroom. And what is, is the, the, what is the action that you take? The action that I take is to like run as I look back, maybe up these crazy staircase. But I'm probably not going to get very far because that sounds like a lot of zombies are coming. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, well, but I thought you ate books, not people. Uh, And as I get eaten, (laughs) you don't have to do it that fast. Let's just let's just say like you trip on the stairs as you're as you're you've come down to see what's going on. And then as you see the action, you're running back up and and like you trip on one of the top stairs or something. Sure. Is that right? an ankle. Yeah. Okay, uh, then we'll move on to uh, a br- well, and your other character, Terry. Ah, uh, Finnegan. Yeah, what is he doing? What's his action? Right, so he's down and he was doing, I guess, what he thought he was going to do whatever, excuse me, um, Reginald was doing. I didn't really have any more resolve tokens, though, so I didn't have anything else to like throw in there. But I was like, whatever he says, uh, yeah. we do. So this is all action. So what does what does Finnegan do? Uh, what is what do what do you guys need? I don't know. I don't know what he needs to do from down there. Like I feel like the zombies are doing the it's sort the of. Lord's it's, work, this is right? sort of just like the 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 like height of like a zombie movie or a zombie book. Like what happens to uh, the people that are trying to fight against the zombies? Like how do how do you know they try to do what they want to, but it goes wrong? And how do they get hurt? And how do they uh, you know, maybe not this round, but eventually. Whoever like, said I'll suspect will be attending Finnegan's Wake. Whatever. <laughs> Wah-ha-ha. Um, I guess- 32 votes for Eat the Rich. Oh, my God. <laughs> yep. That's how it go. Um, all right. I'm supposed to die, though, right? So I, whatever. I don't know. Sorry. If, if you don't want to do else. anything, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, Abria, yeah. let's, uh, I if you want to start yet. with. With Mylan, uh, or uh, per- maybe we start with uh, Amelie. What's her action for this? Um, for I think Amelie is going to get like very into this immediately, and it's just like rabble, and it's going to grab. Uh, yeah, she kind of follows her sister's suit and grabs one of the big. She doesn't grab a knife. She grabs one of the big copper pots off the wall, uh-huh. and when she comes upstairs, she's like, "Yeah, eat the rich," and then it's just going to tee up on one of the big like. I don't know, one of those fine like China vases that's sort of like on a pedestal in the middle and like knocks it and like shatters it. And it's just like, I I've love wanted that. to do that for so long. I almost have knocked it over like three times. <laughs> Fuck that vase. <laughs> I fucking love that. Okay. So, yeah, and then she's uh, not going to about- attack anyone, but she'll yeah. be disrespecting the environment. What about Mylan? Um, Mylan's going to kind of like what, like once she like let everyone know, I think she like sees the right and she like very clearly makes eye contact with uh, Felicity and kind of quirks an eyebrow like, oh, that side noted, Uh, but it's going to like sprint up the stairs and she's heading straight for Shannon Eaton's room because she wants to go talk to her before whatever happens. happens. Okay. I love that. All right. Uh, Next, what are we getting from your two characters? Uh, Felicity is going to grab a, uh, one of those fireplace pokers that has the little curved end that you use to stoke the fire. And she's actually going to exit the area that they're in, the quarters that they're in. And she's going to go to the nearest set of doors that lead out from the estate. And she's going to slide the poker through the handles so anyone who tries to get out can't open the door i'm obsessed with that oh my god okay and uh (laughs) that's so fucked up i love (laughs) and what about um annalisa uh annalisa i think would be in the middle of a deep sleep at this point and i think she heard uh i think she would have heard you said eva took a fall right like she stumbled i think that annalisa would have heard that and you know obviously has no idea what's happening but assumes it's just 
her sister might need her help or something. So she's in her night clothes and she's kind of like bleary eyed and just kind of stumbles out of the room to to go and assist her sister very slowly, very sleepily, very unaware of okay. what is about to befall them. Even with all the yelling. I love it. She's a deep sleeper. She really uh, uh, is. All right, Eric, let's do your two characters, starting with Reginald. Okay. His, I'll set the scene. A strange daughter has just yeah. <laughs> started so, screaming in the foyer. <laughs> so Eva like ran from the zombies and tripped and like twisted her ankle. And we see like like one of them coming close to her and like about to grab her. And then there's a crack as its head pops. And then we see Reginald holding a, a, a pistol and he just swoops her up and like drags her to uh, a sort of uh, this wall area, which opens up to one of the secret patches in the house. And, and, and he just says, Lady Saratoga, follow this passage all the way to the river, then follow the river into the town. And then keep going until you get help. And he's going to shut the, the door behind her. Ooh, I like that. I love the downstairs knowing like the, the ins and outs of the house that like have been long forgotten by the upstairs fuckers. I love that. Thank you, Eric. What about your other character? Uh, uh, Horatio is following behind. Um, and, and and watching the 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 zombies and like trying to like corral them and contain them, but he's like losing some and chasing after them. And then he's like he 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 he's like a couple of them disappeared, so he's like trying to like hunt them down. And he bumps into uh, one of the other like uh, the the other uh, like servants that he doesn't remember the name of, just like w- one of the people who pours wine. But then he realizes that that as he sees that person staring at him, like with a, a weird look on his face, that he's staring at a ghost because that person is dead being eaten by zombies right now. He goes, so, sorry about all this. <laughs> oh, I love that. Like a freshy, fresh ghost. And they're like, oh, what a bummer. <laughs> what does the ghost say to Horatio? He's just like, ah, uh, this is not, I, this isn't what I thought it would be. It's like, yeah, it can be like that traumatic events and all. Oh, oh, don't worry. You'll get used to it, I'm sure. You're soon to have much company. Oh, I love Horatio. I mean, he's kind of a bad, bad boy, yeah. but we like him. Uh, perfect. Thank you. Uh, and then I think we're in round two. Round two, Matthias uh, is now made his big dramatic show in the midst of the foyer, uh, and he is going up the steps as he sees Reginald go to save Eva, and uh, and he is urging the zombies on, uh, but he's also sort of coming on in his own fervor as if uh, he's... Uh, going to attack Eva himself, uh, but Reginald is standing in his way. Uh, so he reaches forward and grasps um, from behind, like grasps uh, Reginald around the neck and with the, like his own like strength plus his magic, like l- turns him around to face him like this and lifts him off the ground. And his eyes are just like blazing uh, at this point. So uh, Reginald is like, choking and suffocating on um that grasp uh and then i'm gonna say that uh constance and spencer uh also come rushing out of their rooms and they're both like in their like uh super comical regency night clothes and and constance is just like screaming uh and uh spencer is trying to like calm her down but he he can't say anything and they're standing at the top of the stairs uh and eva is like fallen and 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 reginald their faithful servant of decades is being choked to death by matthias and constance looks to spencer and goes this might not be the time to tell you but but Eva isn't yours. Eva's Reginald's. So uh, I always felt like close to him. <laughs> and uh, Papa, fake Papa, real Papa, fake Papa, real Papa. 
<laughs> and with that, we will go to Eva. So Eva, you have this realization that you are the you are the daughter of this man that is now being strangled I in was front of you. Supposed to be downstairs. <laughs> I hate it. Does my she, dumb, she, beautiful child. My <laughs> dumb, beautiful <laughs> child. I don't want to live if I have to live downstairs. Oh, my God. So does she run into the secret passage? Does she share where she is? Like, does she try to help her? Oh, she real runs dad? into the zombies. She runs into the zombies? On, on porpoise? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, explain to us what happens to her when she runs into the zombies. Well, I've just always wanted undying affection and love and for people to consume me, so this makes sense for an end. She's a little pop star the whole time. Wow. She's a peppy villager in Animal Crossing for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, do you want to you wanna describe what happens to you or do you want me to do it? Um, so I run into the throng of heaving, like freaking Ooh. hungry ass zombies. And at first I scream bloody murder when I realize what I've done. And I think I've made a horrible mistake, but then I kind of like, I'm like, well, well, to be adored, <laughs> to be wanted, needed. It's not the worst way you could go. <laughs> I'm sorry, family. I'm sorry, daddy. Fake daddy and real daddy. Bye. And I think th throughout that speech, it's just like, ah, ah, oh, daddy. Ah. <laughs> like we've got intermittents of that, and and she falls down the stairs as she's being ripped apart, and uh, <laughs> and getting exactly, Stabs. I guess, what she always wanted. <laughs> um, do you want to do with anything with Finnegan? Do you want to wrap him up or do anything with that character? Oh, what sure. He tries to run up the stairs, um, and tries to you know um, put some sort of fight but realizes it's probably too crazy. I think he's going to try to run away. He's going to like, like start for Eva and then be like, oh wait, no, no, no. <laughs> and then try to get out the front door. Yeah. Okay. I, I like that. I like that. Okay, cool. Uh, Abria, what are your characters up to? Um, uh, uh, so Mylan has made, like made it to Shannon's room and she's like there and kind of walks over uh, crossing through with that weird glamour still on. And she just says, everything out there is bad and getting worse, but everything I've done to this point has been stupid politics, so you have to trust me. I think I can keep you safe from this. And she kind of like moves her hands together and generates this like very pale, almost like moonlight glow in her hands and puts them on the side of Shannon's head and just says, just so you know, it was always you. I have loved you with all my heart for as long as I've known you. <clears throat> the moves of mortals is absurd. So not a movement, not a word, and live to tell what you've seen and heard. And I wanna try to cast one last spell so that if she stays still and like tucked in the corner, none of the zombies will see her and they'll kind of just like leave her alone and leave the room alone. Hey, do you have a resolve token? I don't. I don't have that at all. Not oh, even a little bit. You can have one of mine. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. And she's very specifically going to like try to like close the door and lock it behind her and like fuck? not stay there and draw attention. And she'll like yeah. kind of slowly come back down the stairs to figure out whatever she's going to do in the end. Okay. <laughs> I did not expect that. Okay. <laughs> she's fake. She's in love with the old lady. I know. So beautiful. Oh my God. And what about Amelie? She um, reckon faces. What else? Yo, she to? Amelie's just going. I, I think Amelie is very, very close to being like, oh, I could do a murder. Maybe this is the time. Uh, oh shit. Felicity's out of the room. You went, did you go to the front door or to like the front gate to lock it? The front door. Oh shit! She's oh still my kind god! Of there. And fucking Finnegan's going over there. 
That's so fucking funny to me. <laughs> um, she's going to take advantage of the like kind of couple of seconds when Felicity's back is turned to go over and like do some hits on uh, on Mrs. Uh, Eaton Saratoga and was just like, I tried for years to try to be your lady's maid and I would have done a very good job. And then she's like raises her pot to like hit her and then goes, but I'm not a killer. That's what all of them are for. And she's going to reach down and like take the necklace. I, I don't know. It's like nighttime, but maybe she has like a nice ring or something. It just takes that. Goes, yeah, I know. I like the necklace thing. That's a yeah. great image of you ripping that off. She just wears it like 24 seven. Yeah. And you're like, every time I looked at that, I was disgusted. <laughs> like, yeah. Something like that. You're uh, getting what you deserve. And then she just walks away. And Constance just is like, oh, my yeah. <laughs> who wears pearls to sleep that's insane these are my that's what's night crazy. pearls these are my <laughs> sleeping pearls how dare you you insolent girl <laughs> the woman um okay sorry who wanna <laughs> next you went after a Bria last time right yeah what are your characters <laughs> up to <laughs> uh so Annalisa had been making her way to uh, Eva on on her previous turn. Yeah. And after seeing what happened with Eva, uh, that definitely woke her up. She's awake now. She's not as sleepy. Yeah, Adrenaline um, will do that. I think she, she went to bed at night with her hair, uh, you know, in the process of being curled. Because I guess that's how they, they used to do it. I have no idea. Like sleeping with <laughs> yeah. their hair wound up. Um, and so I think she would like look around furiously looking for something that she can defend herself with and and grab a hairpin that's keeping one of her curls in place. And it, it wouldn't be too long. Yeah. I, I think she's just going to be like, not going to go out like Eva. And she's just going to lift it and ram it into the neck of the nearest zombie that she can see. Ooh, and yeah. I think she has a brief moment of triumph of like, it's dug into the zombie neck and she could quickly disengage and move, but she's so shocked at the fact that she actually effectively did something that she stays there and kind of looks at it and watches what happens and doesn't notice another zombie coming up and just ripping her to yeah. pieces because she wasn't quick enough. Yeah. They've come up like there's another horde that's come up like the other side of the half circle staircase and stuck up on you. And I think like immediately afterwards, that zombie, you put a pin in their neck uh, just as like, <laughs> you know, just as like. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, and so we, so we <laughs> see Anna Lisa. <laughs> just like screaming uh screaming at uh after this moment of uh of undeserved triumph uh <laughs> and then uh what about felicity so felicity Finn is coming towards the door that you've just barred yeah felicity had just barred the door and i i picture the door being like fully wooden i don't think back yeah. then it would have been big to have you know like there's no way for her to look and see anything going on with the door so i think after she secured it she kind of leans and presses her body weight against the door and she knows that the fight's getting closer so she kind of sticks around to make sure her door like uh the barricade that she made will hold and so i think she hears the sound of like someone furiously trying to get out and someone oh you locked in. it from the outside from the out she went around the ground oh okay yeah. okay i did not understand yeah. okay um and then what's her sort of reaction to that i think i think you can hear finn just being like let me out let me out uh she cries and slides to the ground and like falls uh, and hugs her knees to her chest and and sobs as she hears finn screaming and pleading until he gets eaten alive by zombies fair enough uh <laughs> um all right eric <laughs> well reginald having seen uh his his secret daughter ripped apart because she didn't want to work a day in her life <laughs> uh i think he 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 watches it and like like he, and he just watches his like 
the his only connection to this family die and his his only child die and he just kind of goes limp in in the grip of of um of uh matthias's is grip he just kind of lets go and just lets whatever happens happen okay and uh horatio don't make me laugh and cry in like one <laughs> sentence. Fuck you're you, doing baby this. Shoes. You're doing Fuck the same you, shit. Fuck you, baby shoes. <laughs> That's how you're he do. It. That's how he Next, do. You're doing it. Terry, you're doing it. You're all doing it. So no, no one gets to judge. Not in like a sentence. Not I need like sentence. a paragraph. Y'all, y'all are doing the, like, the field flip flop. Short story. <laughs> like, I need like a short film. Horatio uh, has given up on trying to control any sense of chaos and he's just kind of walking around and like he finds like uh where the like uh uh a uh, decanters of of some some liquor and he's just kind of like sampling some stuff seeing well, seeing what he likes and stuff like that and just like trying to not pay attention to the ever increasing number of ghosts in his presence i uh i like that energy trying to like drink so he doesn't have to engage uh that's some haunting of hill house shit and i'm here for it <laughs> All right, it would be Terry's turn, but Eva and Finnegan are dead. Uh, so no, we, Finnegan ran. He just ran. No, Negs described him being torn apart by Whatever. zombies at the other side of the door. I'm so sorry. He let, ran let, to the door us. that was blocked and barricaded. Yeah. I'm sorry. Terry, if you want to explain the final moments of Finnegan, which is a great novel name, <laughs> please do. As I ran and I thought I was escaping. Oh, wait, yeah. Someone use an, a monologue token on Finnegan. I'll do it. I'll use a monologue token for Finnegan. So as I ran and I thought I was escaping, <laughs> I happened upon some, I guess, what someone called the undead. I saw my life flash before my eyes. My one true love, Felicity. She was tough. Sometimes I wonder if I ever really knew what true love was. She was the closest I ever got. I dreamed of a strong woman like her. And now I shall be taken out by strong dead women that are unlike her. As they rip into my flesh, I dream of... This going quickly, really. It's taking some time. I thought this would be a quicker death, but no, it's just going to take time for them to get to. Oh, no, I think that might be it. <laughs> Goodbye, fair world. I bid you adieu. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I lay a bottle of whiskey at his feet. Bless Finnegan's heart. Bless. Oh my God. Best <laughs> monologue token so far. <laughs> Chef's kiss. kiss. Chef's kiss. Oh my God. That... <laughs> oh my God. That was beautiful, Terry. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Dead, uh, dead, 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 dead. Am I still here? <laughs> oh my God, how long does it take to bleed out? They've eaten my entire kidney. <laughs> And the other one at that. <laughs> How many kidneys do I have? Six kidneys. <laughs> oh no, just, just a second. One, uh, two. All right. I'm, I've never been good at a net. Uh. <laughs> Abria. Abria, your yes. characters, what are they doing? Um, ooh, okay. So I don't care if my Lynn lives through this or not, but she definitely comes back downstairs and attempts to treat with the group and she looks around and doesn't see Felicity and makes a bit of an annoyed noise. And then it's going to look over at Horatio. All right. So I'm sure I am seen as one of the aforementioned rich that are being actively eaten. So what's a girl got to do to walk away tonight with all of you? I have ideas for expansion. If that's, any help? Uh, uh, what do you have to offer? Um, I don't know if you were paying attention 
when I ran away earlier, but I literally can do magic. I've noticed that about you, that you seem to know everyone yet have never met anyone. <laughs> I thought I was could, being subtler. We could use someone like you that. <laughs> Help us get into the doors that the two of us struggle. Yes. Well, that's the nice thing about humans. Their memories are kind of a fuzzy thing, easy to play mm. with. Have you ever had brandy? It's quite good. Oh, no, that's a man's drink. Show me. Tell me more. <laughs> and she's going to um, drop the rest of the glamour and like just I walk love over. It. <laughs> I'm going to say um, this exp uh, expends Shannon Eaton's last resolve token because she would want you to live. Oh, buddy. Especially after you helped her. So, because I think you definitely need to use a resolve token to survive this. But I think. Um, the the matron Eaton would want to uh, would want you to live. Oh, so let's do that. Does that sound good? Yeah, that works for me. I was just I was literally about to have Amelie kill her, but that's fine. <laughs> okay, what's Amelie up to? No, I cool. mean, <laughs> I, I I like uh, I like that she's a uh, she's with the winning team. I, I feel yeah. like that's that's her character. Uh, what's Amelie up to? Uh, I think Amelie is now has now worked her. She's like just holding on to night pearls and is actively hyperventilating because she doesn't know where Felicity is. Where's my sister? Where's my sister? Where is she? Is uh, uh, Matthias? Where? Where is she? Is she? Is she safe? If any of them hurt her, I will. I, I definitely don't think Matthias is responding to you. So yeah, that's fair. She's just I'm sort of like screaming in the middle of the foyer. But I think, I think, you know, like she, all this is happening around her. She can't see her sister. She's holding the night pearls. <laughs> and I, 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 I would like to think it elicits some sort of intense action from her. Um, um I don't, do you have an idea of what you want that to be? <laughs> holding all those night pearls. Oh, <laughs> night pearls. I'm just thinking of night cheese night from 30 Rock. <laughs> Uh, I will spend a resolve token from Matthias to have you kill either Constance or Spencer. Yeah. Um, or I'll spend two if you want. Nope. Okay. Don't even, nope. Doesn't really need the resolve token. She just needs the direction and is just going to turn and look from Constance, who's just sort of a dumb mess and much less scary without her night pearls on, her symbol of authority, no matter what time of day. And then looks over at Spencer and goes, you, you could have made things better for all of us all the time. If, if this is anyone's fault, you know, other than the zombies, which I haven't really thought about, which is kind of freaky. It doesn't matter. You did this and you're responsible for everything that comes next. And she's going to grab, like, she's going to pick up the pan that she like dropped on the ground. But I'll spare you having to watch what's going to come of all of your family and everyone else in this stupid shire. And then she's going to hit him with the pan and knock in and do a murder. Just a little one. Love it. Love it. Just a little murder. Just like a little murder. Uh, and I think it's more of like an assist murder because she's like a small girl. So I think I think she successfully fucking knocks him the fuck out with the pan. But I think yeah. his true death is brought on by uh, the ease at which now the zombies that are well up the stairs by now uh, can feast on his unconscious corpse. As long <laughs> as my KDA goes up. <laughs> Your what? My kill death assist. I, just, I don't understand I want my reference. stats to cope. It's a video game. It's a video game thing. I've it's also a Korean I've, pop group from League of I've Legends. I've played a video game and I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Some may say that's all I do. <laughs> Um, that's amazing. Perfect. Uh, next we've got Felicity. What's going on with her out, out front sees? Uh, Felicity. Felicity was crying a lot. I, I think that's like the, the first moment that the, the weight of what they are doing has fully yeah. hit her. There's this moment where you like literally hear Finn on the other side being eaten alive and and I I let me know if I'm overstepping Terry but he might actually know that you barred the door like he might have seen you gone out there and do that he might have been screaming your name does that cause any oh, sort of definitely Felicity Felicity 
you know, has that caused any reaction from her as far as opening the door or going around? Or Ah. no, I I think she takes some time to cry, cry, cry. She cries, she cries quietly. And then terribly. <laughs> I just thought uh, "quiet" was a fancy word. I didn't know. To be honest, like, why doing the apocalypse? <laughs> no, I, I was, was like... just thinking the word "quiet" and started saying "cry" instead. Uh, and I think once she's like cried so much that she's like dehydrated almost, like there's just nothing else to cry. She goes back around uh, the way she came and re-enters the uh downstairs area her quarters Mm -hmm. and i think she she's like very much processing this traumatic thing that is currently happening and is very much in shock from it i think she goes into her things and she looks for like the only nice outfit she owns and she just slowly you know strips the clothes that she's been running around and you know she fell to the floor when Finn was knocking on the door behind her. Uh, And I think she takes them off and kind of like casts them aside and and puts on the one nice outfit that she has and kind of like slowly brushes her hair and, and maybe like ties it up in a ribbon and smooths her skirt out and like regains her composure and walks upstairs Oh, oh. Somehow that's the most fucked up thing that's happened this entire time. I fucking love it. Okay, great. (laughs) Um, Eric, if I could ask you uh, to finish this out for us, we have one living rich person left, which is Constant Eaton Saratoga, Sans Mm. Night Pearls. (laughs) Uh, Can uh, I think maybe like. Maybe like uh, Matthias is is over here commanding a horde and it's like, can you take care of that, Horatio? What are you good for? Um, I think Horatio is like he's been he's drinking a little bit, uh, like looking at some stuff on the ground. He's like, Ugh. right. Uh, and he like sets everything down, cracks his neck. And then his his when he opens his eyes, his eyes have rolled back into into his head. And you just see the like the nearest zombies near Constance, like their their eyes begin to glow as he like sort of takes direct control over them. And they they just pick up Constance and throw her over the balcony to the first floor into like uh, the, you know, the the maw of churning zombies below. And then, like, he, he, as, like, her screams, like, start to fade, he, he closes his eyes and opens them, and his eyes are back to normal. He's like, right. Oh, uh, man. My lady hands turns, you your brandy back. <laughs> She's that, holding it for you to make sure you didn't drop it. He takes it and goes, do you want to get out of here? I oh don't my God. much enjoy this, this scenery anymore. I have never, I never thought I would say yes to you for that. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, and I think if we could uh, could maybe close it on the uh, reuniting of of the sisters, Felicity coming back upstairs in like her nicest outfit, completely clean of blood and gore. Uh, and she's at the bottom of the staircase, and the zombies are still toiling and riling and uh and matthias is now at the top of the stairs just laughing over the corpses of the saratogas uh and i think maybe um i maybe her sister is leaning uh over the edge of the uh like the railing over on the second floor at the top of the stairs and looking down uh at her sister felicity and i would love to just uh, hear a quick exchange between them. Uh, I think, I think Amelie would like run up, like she's spattered in blood and still carrying, uh, clutching night pearls and a bloody pot, and is gonna like run up to her sister to like hug her, and then like stops when she sees that she's clean and fresh, 
and then it's just going to drop both. Sissy? Sister, you should go get changed. Ladies upstairs do not dress in blood-stained clothes. Um. <clears throat> And she looks completely freaked out. And then you watch as she like slowly swallows it. And like her face starts to relax until it like eventually gets to where Felicity's is. And she nods and then like picks up the pearls and wipes them off and hands them to her sister and then smooths her own dress and casually walks upstairs headed for uh, Eva's room to go change. Uh, and I think we we end on this pan out of both of you facing each other. And we have this one sister that's very like uh, prim and her skirts are very unwrinkled and she's very composed and calm. And then this one bloody sister going through this transition of like her old, uh, like, uh, I, I don't know, what, what would you even call that? <laughs> uh, her old like commanders, the old like... Uh, I don't know. Oh, um, no. <laughs> like, just like proprietors of her life. Yeah. Uh, all their their guts and their blood on her. And we see them standing side by side, these strange, like, mirror images. Uh, and we see uh, Felicity take the pearls and slowly put them around her neck. And they are still somehow flawless and shining uh, in the moonlight. And then we watch as... Um, we watch as Amelie uh, resumes that sort of appearance that her sister has and then curtsies and slowly walks upstairs in the, the still like seething thrall of zombies as if they weren't there at all. Uh, and then we pan, we keep panning back out until we have exited out the closed door and we see Eaton Abbey from the outside and it looks as though nothing has changed. And everything is the same and the crickets chirp and uh, the owls hoot and it all disappears into darkness. And that's our episode. <laughs> yes. Merry Christmas, oh my God, everyone. Creepy as hell, I love it. Yay! <laughs> Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. Watch out for zombies. Happy holidays. Eat the old ladies with pearls. <laughs> The oh night pearls. My God. <laughs> night pearls. <laughs> Look out oh for the night pearls. Night oh. pearls, baby, this evening. I'm so glad Terry called me out on looking like I was thinking of something. Because if you hadn't, I wouldn't have changed my mind to do the eat the re eat the rich path. And yes. I kept my votes and been like, no, nope, sorry. We they continue doing yeah. their thing. So we love, we love the collaborative storytelling. Absolutely. Y'all did amazing. Thank you so much. Oh Everybody let us plug the stuff and the things. Terry, do you want to kick us off, my love? Okay. Hi, everybody. This is Terry. I'm dead. Um, <laughs> all my characters. That was fun. Um, you can find me next week here. I think I'm going to be DMing something for these people. <gasps> Probably going to be some monster hearts is what Ooh. I settled on. So let's get into it. Um, cool, cool, cool. You can find me a lot of places on the internet at the Terry Gamble. That's Terry with one R. Um, I have a podcast that comes out every Monday called Horror Movie Survival God. Scary movies we talk about. Um, this week, I had a really great interview with a dear friend of mine, Bradford Nordine who is a queer horror like enthusiast as well as an amazing like author. So we talked about his new book. He just come, came out um, that he wrote during this freaking pandemic with his writing partner, Johnny, and it's fucking good. So check that out. We talk about Blood Diner, this crazy movie from the 80s that was directed by an Asian woman, Jackie Kong, that like I had no idea about. And it's wild. It's like punk rock weirdness. So check that out, too. <laughs> watch the movie it's super insane um and um and then check out the podcast um what else am i doing oh uh diversity higher comedy my sketch comedy group we have a new uh uh episode or new little sketch dropping tomorrow i believe so check that out um and follow us on all the platforms as well diversity higher as i'm getting higher as i'm getting higher whatever you think about it um yeah whoop whoop i feel like i'm missing stuff I feel like I'm doing another thing next week. I'm on like a like 
podcast about like atheism, I think, or like a, I don't know. It's something I signed up and that someone called me. I, I'm doing a thing. Follow me on my Insta, my Twitter. I'll post about it at some point this week. Love you. Yay. Thank you, Taylor. You're amazing. We are. Tell us the things and the stuff. Hi, uh, I'm Maria Iyengar. Uh, you can follow me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Quiddy, Q-U-I-D-D-I-E. Uh, I stream all over the place. Uh, on Sundays, you can catch me playing Creature Collectors uh, on Critical Bards channel at 1 p.m. Uh, on Mondays, you can catch me on D&D's Twitch channel playing Rhyme of the Frost Maiden with Chaos Initiative, the Roll20 crew at 1 p.m. Um, on this tomorrow is the finale of season one of The Unleashed, which is a massive undertaking. I'm very excited. It's going to be like 48 hours long. It's going to it's going to be really good. And Wait. I'm just so You're nervous and excited hour stream no last week so this is a two and a half hour show and last week was four hours and going through the rehearsal today i'm like this is gonna take 19 to 36 hours yeah. so that sounds uh, familiar <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh that's tomorrow at 6 30 p.m on strawberry 17 plays uh the twitch channel um on friday you can actually catch me at uh it's noon Pacific over on World Builders Twitch channel. B. Dave Walters is running a level 20, like crazy one shot. Uh, I'm going to be playing with Talis and Jaffe, Brennan Lee Mulligan, oh. Amy Vorpal, Patrick Rothfuss, and uh, Sage Ryan. And it's going it to be. Line up. Line yeah, wow. it's going to be. Did they have done anyone of note for it's that cast? A bunch of no. <laughs> it's like all stars. I mean, all they got a Bria Iron Guard. So I'm just in there. Like, I'm like afraid oh to God. talk to the cool kids in our like in our group chat. I'm like, shut the fuck up! You are the coolest Abria. kid, Abria. You are the coolest no, kid. Did, he's the no. business girl in tabletop right now. I'm gonna you say, shit. I'm gonna you. yell at Patrick oh, to like go, to like, go quick, finish his books. <laughs> oh no! When I did a show with Patrick last, all I did was fucking razz him, and he loved yes. it. So yes. please just yes. dig into him. He's a fan. Perfect. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be playing a. Uh, uh, bard warlock satyr so i'm very excited for just being a little chaos goblin um and wreck and shop uh you? Chaos? Me? in this economy <laughs> and then uh, later on on friday at 6 p.m you can catch me uh over on pixel circus's channel uh with failed saves we just started we just kicked off season two and uh, it's going really well so far and um yeah other than that uh, oh, Friday is the the finale of Heliotrope for 12-Sided Stories. Uh, it's the end of our campaign there and the end of my run with 12-Sided. It's been amazing and super fun. Uh, so we're going to like send it off big style and uh, make way for awesome so new proud. players to come in. Yeah, a friend of, of uh, Salt Bay, uh, St. Spider, is actually going to be joining the cast. So it's so dope. And I cannot wait to listen to all the cool stories that they're going to tell from here on out. And it's going to be just fucking wonderful and then Storybenders comes out every monday except for the last two mondays because i've been really stressed out but we'll get back to it avatar the last amber to podcast that's it hell yeah. yeah take the time you need you're not like you're like you're like like not busy so like, i am fine. white knuckling through to christmas like i just need a day <laughs> a bria take a day off a bria take a day off how do i make that my ringtone oh my god and where's I want the remix dance for track i want where's that the yeah, remix like, for you vanna or it's not remix. I want Fuck that dance you. track. I will I will tell you oh what my God. therapist told me this week is uh he literally went, Do you know what no means? Nope. Never heard of it. <laughs> I don't know her. I he don't, don't know her. No her babies, babies. I'm gonna <laughs> bring you. I will teach you if you need like some coaching on that. I'm here to help. I say no a lot now. Please. As you I'm get older, write a book, I will read it every day. I would read it and commit yeah, it to my heart. Yeah. You can't sustain it. Like it's fine for you for a little bit, but like you can't keep doing yeah. it forever. I'm literally gonna like Venmo Vanna so she can say no on my behalf. Like, can I give you twenty dollars? I'm, I'm, really, I'm, so <laughs> I'm so good at being someone's assistant. Also, you don't have to pay me. I will oh my call God. them and be like, I'm it's so, so sorry, simple. Everybody is booked. For that it's time. so simple. Can you get you back just to gotta me? never respond to anyone's emails ever. That's what Eric. You know that's how yeah. I actually live. That's so. true, Eric. It is, it is actually a wonder. Eric, that Eric are you calling us all out, out right now? Are you calling us all I out right attacked. now? I thought I was gonna live through this show, but it looks like I got killed at the last second. Fuck you, baby shoes. Fuck you. It is. It is a wonder. It is a true wonder. Oh my goodness. Apparently, everybody needs some no coaching. So I'm happy to offer that for free. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Please <laughs> come into my house. <laughs> tell me no. <laughs> No, 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 this just won't do. Um, Nags, what's up? Tell us, tell us of you. Hi. Yes, uh, I'm Nega Oryx. I'm a full-time variety streamer here on Twitch. And uh, you can catch me live every single day uh, from now until Sunday, doing a lot of stuff on the interwebs. Uh, I'm also one of two co-creators and co-hosts of Big Book Energy. It is a book club here on Twitch. We are currently reading the Percy Jackson and the Olympians series. Uh, we meet the second Saturday of every month. Uh, so come on through. Everyone and anyone is welcome to join us and, and talk all things books. Uh, and then on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, I am on uh, Witchcraft and Wizardry, which is a homebrew, uh, homebrew TTRPG set at Hogwarts. And we are just closing out our second year now. So come on through and say hi sometimes that is on the table story channel and thank you so much for this i i had a lot of fun thank you you're amazing uh Eris. hi you can you can see me hi. here. <laughs> hello i am here on sundays at 4 p.m pacific standard time uh, on this channel for new pantheon academia which is our anime inspired game where we have the the have gods inside of us and we punch monsters and all of that fun stuff uh you know and then you can always catch me uh, mostly eric and all the social medias including twitch where i play the video games yard thank you so much eric also hey, what are you playing right now Sorry. uh you're both trying to plug eric at the same time yeah. <laughs> Playing a lot of, <laughs> lot of World of Warcraft, on stream. Yeah. Wow. Oh, nice. okay. Because the new expansion came out. I heard mm -hmm. wow. Nerds. Uh, is, uh, Abria, go go suck a cow titty. Excuse me. I know what kill um, death assist ratio have, is, girl. Oh my God, fight! Wow, fight, is fight, not fight. for nerds. I have oh. a. I have a small fox person death knight named Funzo who talks like this. Is that for nerds? I think not. What a depressed person named <laughs> this? <laughs> what is that? That looked like a baby penis. I'm sorry. Oh, Can we not do the show anymore? I'm done. It's my connect to fight uh, stress ball, but it looks oh like a Oh my God. Thank Michael. God. Thank God. Okay. I was I like, I will not show I'm... my extensive dildo collection on the stream. <laughs> I okay. was very concerned. Not during Eric's plug time. Okay. I would not do that. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I don't want to upstage him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, the stream. Bye. Pantheon's very good, by the way. Um, and Eric's I've amazing. Been, Eric is amazing. Look at his hair. You're amazing. No, he's Look at cool. him. Look at him. His spotlight. hair, his hair looks like it smells like great hair. gel pen. He spends and I mean like all of my... my heart. <laughs> I assure you, it does not smell that good. <laughs> mm. Dude, what, what's that hair smell like? <laughs> That's not like... Is it, it cedar like, and honeysuckle? It smells like I haven't washed it since uh, Saturday because I don't want the dye to run. I am black. I don't wash my hair good, every day. Ever. So that's fine. <laughs> like ever. Yeah, I'm dude. depressed. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm Havana. <laughs> You can find me at twitch.tv slash Vanna. That's V-A-N-A streaming whenever the fuck I want because I'm trying to learn how to say no. <laughs> and I'm trying to learn what a worth work, what a worth is, what a work life balance is. Uh, so follow my Twitter, more importantly, twitter.com slash Havanarama. That's an H A in front of that Vanna with an R A M A at the back. Um, I'm sure that'll make sense to everyone. And uh, join my Patreon under the same name. Uh, I do, we have different tiers. I have a just supporting me tier. I have a tier where you can see pictures of my dog and the food I cook. I have a singing tier. I'm doing a duet with my friend Blep, who I used to be a band with. Yeah. Uh, we are doing a cover uh, of a musical called Wild Party. Uh, we're doing, what? yeah. What? We're what? doing the duet, uh, People Like oh. Us. And he just sent me, he just sent me like his half of the duet yesterday. So that'll be coming up. Uh, we have an, I have an art tier and I'm, I did a photo shoot for this game called Scarlet Hollow. So I did a cosplay of one of the main characters in that. So that'll be going up there. I have a tabletop RPG tier where I've been posting all the behind the scenes stuff yeah. for this show, including all of my notes 
and uh, all of the character sketches that have yet to go live. The only people who have seen them are the people respective characters. They haven't even seen each other's characters. So if you are subscribed to the Patreon, you will see those even before the other players do. And I have a content tier. Uh, I've been doing content creation for six plus years and uh, I know a thing or two. So if you want some inside info about how to make content on the internet, uh, and then subscribe at that level. But yeah, that's uh, patreon.com slash Havanarama as well. And yeah, y'all are beautiful. Thank you for bearing with us today. Story Brewers, thank you so much uh, for this amazing system. I would really love it to play it again uh, with the actual intended content. <laughs> from expanded acquaintances as I just sort of uh, like someone said earlier, Frankenstein them together. Um, I would love to delve into that deeper and do it, uh, do each one of them individually justice. So I hope we get to play more of it in the future. Thank you so much. My players uh, could not, would not do it without you. And uh, thank you so much for Dom for putting uh, all of this together. And of course, Eric, our producer uh, for keeping us all in line. And thank you to all of you supporting the channel, all the sub love uh, tips, bits that you cheer make sure that we can keep coming back and keep doing this uh, for all of you. So thank you. And please take care of yourselves. Please take care of each other. And we will see you again next time. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.